Yes, sir. We're up. We're live. Tweet it. Oh, we live? Where's the mic off so we can... Um... Oh, that's where it is. That's where it is. All right. Hold on. Fifty-three minutes worth of driving separates these two teams in Massachusetts. But today on the gridiron, it's 84 games worth of history, worth of bitter rivalry, as Boston College is back for another week of college football as they welcome the Crusaders of Holy Cross from the FCS all the way up from Worcester in a high mass battle in Beantown. Boston College will look to right the ship from last week and even their record at one and one. It's the Crusaders, it's the Eagles. Ladies and gentlemen, how lucky are we to be back at Alumni Stadium for week two of college football coverage, all right here on WZBC Sports. WZBC Sports, we welcome you now inside the broadcast booth. My name is Giovanni Collada. My partner today is Jacob Lasser. And Jacob, look who gave us an upgrade. We got some nice equipment today um, as I fiddle with it over here. How are you feeling about this new day and hopefully this new team we see? So I'm, I'm very excited. We uh, found all this equipment somewhere in a storage locker. Uh, we're very excited about it. Much better than our Zoom audio that we've been using. Uh, the the for passing the past. of the mic across the desk. Oh, like yeah. It's, it's, uh... it's, it's just beautiful. But uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, we're looking forward to a much cleaner sound. Uh, now to the game, 84th meeting between the Crusaders and the Eagles. Last time they played was in 2018, back when A.J. Dillon tore up the Crusaders defense and took away the MVP of the game award, which is called the Omelia Award. There you go. BC has won nine straight games against the Crusaders, and they win the, they're winning the all-time series 48-32 and three ties. A, a series that is, that is embedded with so much history outside of being in the same state. These teams have met pretty infrequently since 1979. That was the last time that Boston College beat Holy Cross, and they are on a nine-game winning streak, albeit they haven't played in over 40 years. But let's talk about the Eagles, because the last time we saw them, disappointment would be a word that, that first comes to mind, but I think that rejuvenation is the other word we see this week when Jeff Hafley and his staff talked about how to fix what happened last week. It was a loss to Northern Illinois, a 27 to 24 overtime defeat. Hands their Eagles their first loss of the new year. And Jacob, if BC's going to get back on the right track today, what are they going to need to do to beat Holy Cross? So I think here that Tommy Castellanos is the guy, first of all. Second of all, last week, what I noticed from our receivers and tight ends is that they had a little trouble holding on to the ball when Tommy was getting them the ball. For example, uh, our tight end, George T T Takax, Ta my there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> my apologies, uh, I'll go had quite a few drop passes last week. Uh, he only went for, I believe, less than 10 yards of receiving. If we want to be better this week, our receivers have to hold on to the ball. All week long, we heard that this is a new team and a new season. Boston College is having the, the goldfish mentality that's been popularized by Jason Sudeikis and Ted Lasso of 
putting it in the rearview mirror and starting anew as if their record is 0-0 coming in today. Like they're going to win all 11 remaining games. And speaking of new habits and new strategies, I want to get to the starters today. Now that we have enough time to do so, we have about 15 minutes before we'll kick off here in Alumni Stadium. We'll take a quick break before that. Before we get to the starters for Boston College, let's look at Holy Cross, Jacob. This is a very formidable opponent that comes into the Eagles' house today. The four-time champions running of the Patriot League Conference. They have absolutely dominated the regular season, having not lost a game in over two years. And while they've lost their last two FCS playoff games, they are a team that knows how to win, and they're led by head coach Bob Chesney. What do you like about Holy Cross, Jacob? So first, what I like about Holy Cross is their quarterback, Matthew Sluka. He threw for 26 touchdowns last season and over 2,400 yards. He also ran for 11 touchdowns and over 1,000 yards rushing. A very impressive season for him, to say the least. Uh, at running back, they've got... Jordan Fuller, who had over 500 rushing yards last year, and he actually has thrown a touchdown in his career. Yeah. It was a seven-yard touchdown. So there's a very dynamic offense. We're going to be looking for some tricky plays, um, and I'm just really excited to see what Holy Cross has to bring. But I want to see that BC defense step up in a big way today against an FCS opponent. And step up they will have to if they're going to minimize Sluka and Jordan Fuller. He got into the end zone five times last week in their 42-20 opening day victory against Merrimack. Sluka only threw 14 passes. Mm. So they're very keen to run the football. We see that with Coach Bob Chesney. Their offensive coordinator has said all week that gentleman's name is Dean Kennedy. It's his second season as the Holy Cross offensive coordinator. And with weapons such as Fuller, Matthew Sluka, and their other running back, Tyler Purdy, who got into the end zone last week in the big win. Mm. They, they have potentially three contributors that are very, very able and, and will get a lot of touches in this game. So how is Boston College going to be able to minimize the run, especially Sluka today? So we're going to be looking for our front lines on defense to really step up today for the Eagles. We're going to be looking for Akpala. We're going to be looking for Ezeraku. We're going to be looking for... De Palma. We're going to be looking for our cornerbacks to be making plays on the ball in order to beat this Holy Cross defense. Uh, offense, my apologies. All good. And we have to get to that quarterback before he's able to run out of side of the pocket and make some plays. We'll see if they're able to do that. Maybe we see some corners that wouldn't normally play today because of their ability to tackle on the outside. 14 passes. Will they throw more than that today? Will they throw less? We're all about to find out in a matter of minutes. 12.50 till we kick it off. But first... Let's meet the Eagles for real this time. Thomas Castellanos at around 9.25 this morning was named the starter. As I mentioned, he had 13 of 28 passing last week, 138 yards, threw for two touchdowns, got in for another, while he tacked nine rushes for 67 yards, including Jacob, a 30-yard rush on his first ever play as a Boston College Eagle. Pat Garo is the starting running back, the 5'9 redshirt senior from Levittown, Pennsylvania, is on the Doak Walker preseason watch list for the best running back in the country. He had 10 for 44 last week. You'll see some of Alex Broom today, who had five attempts for 23 yards yesterday. The sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee, looking for his breakout game. Ryan O'Keefe is the graduate transfer from UCF. He had the most receptions on the team last week. He's looking to add to that total this week. Joseph Griffin Jr., the hero of the NC State win last year, is the sophomore from Springfield Central, Massachusetts. He had two receptions for 23 yards, looking to improve on that figure here. Dino Tomlin will see some time, but Lewis Bond was the leading receiver in this game. He had 40 yards and caught a fourth down play from Tommy that might just be in BC lore forever. Our call of it was okay, but Tommy was the one that made that play to make the call possible. George Takis is the graduate from Naples, Florida. He only had a reception for two yards from last game, but expect to see a little bit more of him in this game as I look to beat Holy Cross over the top. Connor Litton is back kicking today after sitting out last game for Liam Connor. Can Sam Candotti had seven punts and put four, or excuse me, five inside the 20 with a long of 43 as he got a lot of work in last game. So as we'll move on to the defense in a minute. But let's look at this offense. Who stands out to you today, Jacob, as someone that has to play well in order for BC to win? I think I know who you're going with here. 
So I'm going to, of course, first start with Tommy Castellanos. Um, we are looking for a huge game from him, especially on the ground. But what I noticed last week is that we were using a playbook meant for Emmett Moorhead. This week, we've got to change the playbook. Our offensive coordinator, uh, Steve Shim Shimko, has to edit that playbook and make sure to give Tommy some space on the run. Other than that, I'm looking at Joseph Griffin Jr. He had a big week last week. Uh, he had a big game against NC State last year. I was actually talking to some uh, future BC commits on the train uh, back from the game last week, and they were talking about how they used to play against Joseph Griffin Jr., wow. and he used to tear them up. So I'm looking forward to watching him today. Joe Griffin climbed the ladder in the NC State end zone to beat the number 20 ranked Wolfpack. He's accepting a big year this year as one of Castellanos' favorite targets all camp long. But first, Jacob, let's meet the defense. Neto Akpala is the junior from Loganville, Georgia, and he had one tackle and one TFL in last week's game. He'll be joined on the defensive line by Cam Horsley, the senior from Cinnamonson, New Jersey, had five tackles. That ties his career high at defensive tackle. The sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland is Quan Williams, who has, did not record a stat last game, but was part of that trial by fire that, oh, should we keep going? Let's keep, let's keep going. Donovan Azaraku is the superstar All-ACC selection, who had eight tackles last week. Chris Banks is gonna join him on the line defensive tackle. He picked up a fumble in last week's game. Vinny De Palma had 12 tackles, six solo. A very flew impressive all, game Flew all him. around the field. Five total tackles for Cam Arnold. He'll be in the spy slot today looking after Sluka. Elijah Jones is the starting defensive back. He'll be joined by transfer from LIU, Victor Nelson, along with Karee Johnson in the nickelback slot. John Pupil will get his second start at strong safety, while Cole Batson is back in the free safety slot. We'll see a little bit of Amari Jackson as we get to the slot corner. We'll take a quick break, say the national anthem, and kick it off here from Alumni Stadium, all back in a few minutes. Back here in Chestnut Hill, we're about to introduce the Eagles and then all, be formal all the formalities will be done, excuse me. And the only thing that will be left to do is kick it off in week two. Boston College is 0-1, Holy Cross is 1-0, trying to right the ship 
here to get this team back on track. There will be a lot of fans in the stands today, Jacob. This stadium is sold out for the first, as long as I can remember back. I mean, we'll see the stats back on when they can, the last time this stadium was sold out, but many, many, many Holy Cross fans have made the trip, and just as many BC fans are here to pack this stadium and support their Eagles, Jacob. What do you make of how the atmosphere is going to impact this game today? So I'm looking forward to a loud, loud alumni stadium today. Uh, we've got the students here. They've already started a safety school chant at the Holy Cross faithful that are here. What I noticed from the tailgate, let's call this Jacob's tailgate takeaways. I love uh, that segment name. I love it. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of Holy Cross fans here, which makes sense because they are an interstate, uh, an in-state rival for Boston College. But let's talk about the O-line for a second, if you don't mind shifting gears. I'm trying Last to week, shift my chair here as I get into this view. <laughs> So what I saw from our O-line last week was much improvement from last year. I noticed Christian Mahogany. I noticed Drew Kendall. I noticed Kyle Hergel. I am very excited to see what this O-line can do this week because we protected our passers very well last week. Well, BC's about to make an entrance here. Uh, any last words before kickoff? I think it, it relies on the strength of the front seven and... The offensive line, those five, if you can protect the quarterback well today and if you can get after Sluka, keep him in the pocket, I think your magic number for carries is under 10. If you hold him to under 10, maybe 12 carries today, you're going to see a Holy Cross offense that will not be able to do what they want to do with the football and allow Boston College to really take advantage and score a lot of points here. And one of the big things we highlighted in the pregame shows this week and all the, the radio things that we were trying to to uncover what happened in last week's loss that is to be avoided today if they're going to win, you cannot give Holy Cross more opportunities to play. The more plays you give them, Jacob, the more opportunities they're going to score. That's just a default, um, or def really deferral by just by default. How easy it is if you have more chances with the football, you're going to eventually start to score with a team like Holy Cross. Yeah, if we talk about Jeff Halfley led Eagles, we're talking about a very undisciplined team. They've got to show more discipline on both sides of the ball and not give the Holy Cross offense more chances on the field. What we noticed last week is that the defense really did stand tall. The defense actually looked terrific last week during the first half. But when you give Holy Cross those extra chances, when you make mistakes on offense, when you take those bad penalties on defense, it just gives the offense of Holy Cross, or last week it was NIU, more momentum exactly. to score more points. And, and that's one of the main reasons why BC lost. And score uh, more points they did, but for that game you had 21-7. It felt like 38-14 to because of how both defenses were really able to stop. And not even so much NIU's defense as the fact that untimely penalties, mental errors such as drops, and a total, as you said, lack of discipline all around until finally the reinvigorated second half seemed to show a different team altogether, I think, buoyed by Tommy's performance. That fourth down play is obviously highlight real material. You had multiple great catches from Lewis Bond, a couple from O'Keefe. Jaden Williams, who struggled with drops in the first half, had that 30-yard touchdown right here in our end zone, the north one, tied the game at 21. It was an electric scene for those who were still here. So hopefully you get some fans to stay in today because it means that either it's close or that Boston College will be doing what they came to do, taking care of business. Here in week two is the captains are going to midfield. It's going to be Ezra Raku joined by Pat Garwo, Christian Mahogany, and Vinny De Palma. Let's listen for the coin toss. Jacob, you got any predictions about who wins this toss here? Oh, man, I'd say uh, tails for Boston College is my prediction. We're not supposed to be betting men, but we have our, we have our fun where we can. <laughs> So tails is the call, and Boston College has elected to take the football. What do you think that says about Jeff Halfley's mentality in this game, Jacob? They want to get the ball into Tommy's hands. They want to get the ball into Jaden Williams, into Alex Broom's hands. We want to get the ball into Pat Garwo's hands right now. Let's see how the Holy Cross defense, this FCS defense, can manage the run game of Boston College. ACC atmosphere. For sure, this stadium is starting to fill up as we get ready to play some football in Alumni Stadium, week two of Boston College Eagles football. 
is right here at Alumni Stadium. We see Tommy, as expected, taking long throws about 50 to 55 yards away. Holy Cross is saying their final words. The hay, as they say, Jacob, is in the barn at this point. Nothing more left to do but play ball. And we will do just that in a matter of minutes. Stay tuned here on WCBC. Back here for kickoff, a short break is expected. Kicking to Boston College is going to be Holy Cross. Their KO's man is from Miami, Florida, Luis Palenzuela, the sophomore who's a state champion at Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. He is kicking to Ryan O'Keefe and Jaden Williams back deep for Boston College. Rumblings in the stands, can they right the ship? We're moments away from saying 60 minutes of football for one and one if they're able to do it. Holy Cross jumping on the sideline. Boston College, all business. Paluenza is ready. O'Keefe and Williams are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some football in week two as we are underway here from Alumni Stadium? Williams gonna take it inside the five easily and quickly corralled. Right around the 15, the ooze from the stadium roar as a big hit from the Holy Cross kick team has the rumblings in the stadium going early. But Boston College and Tommy Castellanos take over from the 15-yard line. Castellanos was 13 to 28, is a 46% completion rate, 138 yards and two touchdowns through the air. But it was really his legs, Jacob, that made him get so many highlights on Instagram, including from our own our own broadcast reel. Yes, um, so let's see, the, the Eagles are about to start here on offense. Let's see what they can do. The lineup, Castellanos on the pistol. O'Keefe is in motion. It'll be Garo on a first carry, and Garo's got a, a nice hole early. Pat okay. Garo's got his first carry of the game. It's a second down now and three after a gain of seven up to the 22. A good start for the Eagles offense. Uh, there was a hole there for Garwo to get through, and uh, that, that's a very impressive start. Let's see if they can build on it. And so these new clock rules, Jacob, we forgot to mention this last week. These new clock rules means that there's less time on the play clock, so these teams are keen to run it quick. They go right back to the line. Jeremiah Franklin joins Takis on the line. Garwo for a second carry, able to bowl forward and easily is able to pick up a first down near the 30. Gain of seven that time for Garwo makes it first and 10 from the 29. And O'Keefe is trotting his way onto the field now, so let's see if they'll go to the air for this play. A great start for the running offense, though, as uh, Garwo is able to make his way through the middle two times in a row there. Quickly at 14 yards on two carries. They have O'Keefe behind Williams on the right side. Alone on the left, Lewis Bond. Castellanos will play action. Dump Dwick to O'Keefe, he had him in the flat and he missed him. Had some quick feet there to Tommy Castellanos. He misses O'Keefe in the flat, it'll be second and 10, he again was, from the 29. As I said, O'Keefe did trot out onto the field there. He was wide open on that play. He was ready to take that ball for at least 25 yards, but uh, unfortunate missed miscue by uh, Tommy Castellanos pair, there on his first throw of the game. Pair of UCF teammates there. Moving up to Boston College, we know what kind of wheels O'Keefe has. He might have broken that one. Taji Johnson is in the X to the left of Castellanos. As now it's Xavier Coleman in with Castellanos. This oh. time he hits O'Keefe. He loses the ball. Did the ball came out. It. it looks like. We'll wait for the call, and it might have dropped out of bounds. Holy Cross thinks they have it. I think it might have dropped out of bounds. I saw it hit the white over there. No call from our referee. And oh. they do give the ball back to Boston College. Boos so the ball, the Holy Cross section. Ball comes out there. Uh, it was a big hit by the Holy Cross defense, but um, unfortunately for Holy Cross, that ball did go out of bounds. So it's they'll give them a gain of five with it too from the 34. It's now third down and five. Early Boston College gets a big break there, Jacob. Marcus Woods, our referee, makes the call. 
They go five wide, two by three to his left. Let's see if Tommy's going to take off here. Down. He's got some time up to the 40, past the 45, all the way down inside Holy Cross territory, past the 50 to the 47. A great play called by the Boston College offensive coordinator there as we give Tommy some time and space to run, and of course it works out. Quickly, they'll go hurry up after the big gain. Has all day in the pocket. He hits his man. That's Kai Robichaux for his first career BC reception. He's past the 40 down to the 39. A good first reception there for him as we are able to get that nine yard uh, conversion. Officially a gain of eight, second and two as we're now under 1240 in this game. BC's first drive might yield points as I knock on wood. They'll have Castellanos on the pistol as Garwo is back in the backfield. Franklin moving to the fullback spot. Quickly they'll snap. Garwo gets the rock. He's got a big hole up the middle. Down to the 30 goes Kai Robichaux, excuse me, on the, on the incompletion there, on the, excuse me, the incorrect player. I'm still learning all these players as well. As we're down near 12 minutes, a gain of nine. Has it down to the 31 yard line on first down and 10. So let's see if that becomes a theme in this game. Kyle Robichaux didn't touch the ball at all last game. Uh, let's see if he mo is moving up the depth chart for Alex Broom. Transfer from Western Kentucky will trot off the field for Cameron Barfield. Now Castellanos will look to once again to O'Keefe from the flat, and this time he's able to hold on to it. In on the tackle was the safety, the freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, Stu Smith. Seven tackles and one pass breakup last year for, or excuse me, in the first game for Holy Cross. A few highlights on this um, Holy Cross defense. We've got Jacob Dobbs, who had six tackles last game. He is a fifth year student. We've also got Curtis Harris Lopez, uh, number 21. He's their free safety. He didn't have much of an impact last season, but he's a junior. Second down and eight from the 29. Castellanos will look from the gun. Barfield splits out wide. Castellanos going to do it himself. Cuts up left, now back towards the middle. Able to take it past the 25, down to the 24. Gain of five that time makes it third down and four from the 25 is the official spot. Robichaud trots back out to the field. Now we see Joe Griffin for the first time. This is such a deep team, Jacob. We heard that all camp where they're really policing themselves, everyone's playing for their jobs, but also on game day, we see a wide variety of different players. Yeah. Now Castellanos sets in from the gun. Robichaux, again, they join him with two, bunch up on the left side. He gives up to Robichaux, charging for the sticks. Did he get there? Let's see. Mm. Gonna I think he might be short. The spot and referee signals first down. Oh, really? At least initially. Clock is stopped at 10.22. They are going to see Dobbs lost his helmet making that tackle. And there is the call. It's a first down for the Eagles. They move the sticks once again. And, and Jacob, keen to run the ball here. Only one pass, or no, excuse me, a couple of passes have hit O'Keefe. Yeah, so um, as I said at the top of the show, BC is looking to run the ball right through this Holy Cross defense. Uh, so far, it's been proven successful. Let's see what they do here on first down in the red zone. Break the huddle and quickly they get to the line. They had, they're keen to run Castellanos on the pistol as Robichaux stays in behind him. A one receiver split on each side. Castellanos will deke the throw to Bond. Slides down in a late hit with no flag. Means that he's down just past, just, excuse me, inside the red zone down to the 16. Nice run there from Castellanos leads two. As we're under 10 minutes, second and eight from the 18. Castellanos has been sliding out there a little bit. Um, I've noticed he fell on his last two plays with the ball uh, in motion. So let's see if he can stay on his feet here. We did expect some rain in the forecast. None has come yet as this stadium packed now. From the pistol, Castellanos will fake to Barfield. Got to get on his horse out right. Throws to a man. He found someone. Let's see what the call is. Did he hold on? He did it. What a catch from Lewis Bond, the star of last week. And another highlight reel play finds Bond. First down and goal for Boston College a from nice. the three yard line. Castellanos trying to punch it in. He'll look to the end zone. Takis was in traffic, it's incomplete. Yeah, a nice catch there by, uh, by Bond at around the third, uh, the three yard line. Well, Bond looks like his 
number one target last week, and it looks like that's going to continue into this week as Bond does trot out off the field now. We saw him get in the end zone this week. If they can punch it in here, he'll have to wait for his second touchdown of the season. In on that on stop of Takis was Devin Haskins, the graduate who, who had a great year last year, was an All-American and All-Patriot League first team. Let's see if they can beat him this time. Jeremiah Franklin, the only tight end. Robichaud gets the clock, going forward, punching it in for the first touchdown of the day. That's how you set the tone early as they start week two fast with a nice long drive that ends with a score. We Kai hit on, Ro oh sorry, Kai Robichaud has his first touchdown as an Eagle. It's seven nothing, Boston College. We hit on all three of my keys to the game. We hit on giving Tommy the ball, we hit on receivers not dropping passes, and we hit on running that ball. And a great score for Kai Robichaud here as the extra point is about to be taken. Litton is up and it is good. First extra point of the year for Connor Litton. And they drive six minutes and 11 seconds down the field to score the opener and draw first blood. And NIU possessed the ball 37 minutes last week. If they can do that again, BC will definitely dominate the time of possession in this one, Jacob. Yeah, uh, a really successful drive for Steve, Sh Steve Shimko's offense here. We'll see what they can do later in the game, but that was a fantastic start. Absolutely textbook. You just saw a couple of runs. You saw different running backs did the ball. Alex Broom was not one of them, but... We saw Cameron Barfield make his first couple of series. Kai Robichaud got in the end zone for the first time as an Eagle. And just an all around foundational and fundamental game plan there from Coach Hathley and Coach Shimko. So we're gonna take a quick break here. And we, when we get back, the BC de defense will trot out onto the field for their first time of the, even, of the afternoon. I'm good. Back here in Alumni Stadium, 849 remains in this game. It's, or excuse me, in this first quarter. <laughs> a long way from getting to the eight minute mark of this game. But a touchdown from Kai Robichaud, 611 on a drive that spanned 84 yards. Just absolutely the way, just, just all around different from Boston College when you look at last week. Yeah, we, we look a lot better this week. Uh, than we did last week to start the game especially on offense. So uh, whether that is because of a weaker Holy Cross defense or not, we'll see. But uh, BC here is about to kick it off and uh, see what our defense can Only do. Only time will tell, 54 minutes and change to play. Seven nothing early in favor of Austin College. Litton will kick off to, I put the kicker on the other side, uh, Tyler Purdy. 
And Purdy going to let that one drop in the end zone. Justin Shorter, the wide receiver, was back with him as some, some extra givens from Shione Hala on the kickoff just to show you the bad blood of this rivalry, even though they haven't played since 1979. Yeah, uh, I wonder what this rivalry means to these players who are uh, currently in uniform here. Because, again, we haven't seen Holy Cross that many times over the past few years. Matthew Sluka trots out with Tyler Purdy. They'll sit fuller for the first drive. BC going to come out with a base 3-4. Sheeta Salah on the end of the line. And they'll run. They'll hand off to Purdy up towards the 30. Tyler Purdy able to get past it. Not until Cole Bassett with the shoestring in to take him down. Gain a six that time as clock runs past 8.30, down to the 31 for Holy Cross. I am really excited to see what Sluka can do against an FBS opponent in Boston College. Well, I'd rather him not do pretty too well against Boston College, but it is going to be interesting to see for sure. Same personnel for HC. They'll bunch two on his right. Sluka looks to the flat. He's got Purdy again, and Jones is able to get him out towards the 35, depend on the spot or whether or not he got up to it. And based on that, it's third down. Only a gain of one that time up to the 32 as Elijah Jones with the open field tackle rallied to him quickly. Uh, we'll see if um, Sluka takes off with the ball here or if he hands it off to one of his running backs. Also, maybe a screen pass might get them over that first down yard marker. He had FCS highs, 203 attempts for 1,234 yards. He starts this play under center. In comes Jordan Fuller. Flag flies. We'll see what it is. Looks like a false start. George Rooks, the defensive tackle for Boston College, was pointed to that one. No call yet from Woods, the referee. And it does. False start. Is a false start against Holy Cross. Eric Schoen, the senior from Ontario, Canada, is the left guard. And he will give charge with a penalty there. So it was third and three, now third and eight, Jacob. So third and eight, uh, let's, let's see if BC can get a stop here, but um, I'd say let's bring the pressure They'll here. They'll run a trips out to the right. BC looking for an Arnold up to the line. The stop to change the play as Jordan Forrest, the junior running back from New Rochelle, New York, joins Sluka in the gun. Sluka back to throw, looks Ooh. to the outside, he's got a man. That's Jalen Coker, his leading receiver from last year, who had 914 yards. The senior from Sterling, Virginia, has his first in this game. It's a first down conversion up to the 40 for Holy Cross. Yeah, Coker, uh, he caught 11 touchdowns last year. As you said, 914 yards. Same personnel to go two by two. Sluka will throw once more. Roll out to his left. Now we'll pull it down. Holland misses a tackle in the pocket. A big stop from Cole Batson will get him out of bounds, past the 35, up to the 36. Cole Batson out of California. He had 28 total tackles uh, last year in 2022. Officially, no gain. 6.45 to go in this first half. Or excuse me, a second and eight, late with a the spot there. Jordan Fuller has his second rep of the game. Obviously scored five touchdowns last week, but received all kinds of honors for it as they split him out to the flat. Sluka under heavy pressure. Akpala was in there. He'll use his legs for the first time. Sluka showing what he can do as he's rallied to, but not before he gets all the way down to the 45. That gain that time from Matthew Sluka. First down and 10 to the 47. So Akpala really broke through there, but he just could not make that tackle. That can't happen. BC's got to finish its sacks. Officially a gain of 16 is now a timeout called for an injured eagle. Down right around the 45-yard line. We'll see who it is. It looks to be, uh, he's tilted, kind of facing me. Can't really see his number. Ends in a three, Jacob, if you want to. If we want to, it looks like Owen McGowan. Yeah. The middle linebacker. One total tackle last week. And he is able to get up. Oh, no, that's not him. That's not him. Let's see who it is. We're, we're, we're trying to figure out who this eagle is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hold tight. This, this roster sheet they give us is printed in extra small font just so we can read it. 
You see a 93 here, Jacob. I'm looking, know. I'm looking. Oh, I got it. That's Owen Stoudemire, the redshirt sophomore defensive tackle from Austin, Texas, who's able to get up off his own power. And so early, we, early through a few plays here, what have you seen from Holy Cross that is showing maybe maybe a long day for BC? So we saw exactly what we were gonna, what we were expecting. Honestly, we saw a pass caught by Jalen Coker. He's gonna be their target if they're gonna go in the air. But um, we also saw that dynamic running of Matthew Sluka, their quarterback. We've got to contain him. We've got to spy him. Uh, I know you were talking about our QB spy earlier. What are your keys for BC to kind of stop this Holy Cross dynamic offense? Well, it's going to take a designated spy for the entire game, Jacob. It, to use an analogy like the Baltimore Ravens have, who will make their season debut along with the rest of the NFL tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. The Ravens have Roquan Smith, who's kind of the hard-nosed tackler. That, to me, looks like the Vinny De Palma of this team. And then what Cam Arnold is to BC, Patrick Queen is to the Baltimore Ravens. The spy person, where if there's not a running quarterback, he'll drop back into coverage. But if there is, like Matthew Sluka we have today with Holy Cross, we might see Cam Arnold stay in the middle third of the field and be able to mirror him on both sides and with some help from the DBs, rally to him quickly. Yeah. We'll see what they can if they can actually execute that. Uh, do you want to take a quick break here? We'll take about a 30-second break before the uh, defense comes back onto the field. Back now, 6.06 to go in this first quarter. First down and 10 from the 47 after a 16 yard carry on third down and eight by Matthew Sluka. Eagles will trot out an extra defensive back, show nickel. The extra DB is Amari Jackson, but Cam Arnold is lined up on Bryce, oh no, excuse me, Quentin Gregory all the way out in the X to Sluka's right. They'll go two by three. Sluka all alone in the pocket, deals over the middle with no flags, it falls incomplete. He wanted Jalen Coker that time, but Elijah Jones draped all over him, brings up second and 10. Yeah, some good coverage there by Jones uh, as he tries to make that long pass to Coker. Just sailed him a little high, was looking over the middle of the field. Would have been a big hitter if they could have connected, not to be for Sluka and Coker. Let's Tyler see. Purdy, oh excuse me, go ahead Jacob. I want to see BC bring the pressure if they make it to third down here. They show a 4-3. The one DB on the, on the Z slot on shorter. Sluka on read option, hands off, it's Tyler Purdy. Vinny De Palma able to rally to him before the sticks. Right around the 40, maybe to the 39. But it is third down for Boston College. 5.40 to go in this opening quarter. It'll be third down and one from the 38. I believe, was it Vinny De Palma who led the team in tackles last it week? He was. He had 87 last year, also 10th in the ACC. Let's see if he can build on that this year with a uh, much improved Eagles defense. He's flying, been flying around the field with some more of what we're used to after seeing last week. They'll stack the box, couple tight ends out for Holy Cross. De Palma changing the play. Tyler Purdy, the back behind Sluka. It'll be a jet sweep. Quentin Gregory will get it, and they're going to rally to him right on the stick, if not behind it. BC thinks it's fourth down, and it is. A loss of two. Back to the 40-yard line, and Boston College able to stand tall on third down and short. What a stop by the, uh, the Eagles' front line there on uh, defense. Our defensive line looks great to start off the game. Bob Chesney not afraid to be risky here early. FBS versus FCS opponent. Fourth down and three from the 40. Four and a half to go in the opening quarter. Sweaty palms from Sluka as a look for the option. Cut up the middle, let's see if he got it, he did. Yeah. Rolling down to the, just above, excuse me, the 35 yard line to the 36. A little misdirection there. Uh, everybody thought he was going one way to the left, but he decided to run it to the right. 
So uh, the BC defense gets a little confused, about a gain of three on the play. John Pupils, the free safety, has his first tackle of the day. The graduate from Dartmouth, not somebody you expected to start coming into this year, but after an amazing camp, he's back there in the free safety slot with Cole Batson alongside him. Sluka will be rejoined by Fuller in the backfield and he'll get the ball here. The five Ooh. touchdown scorer from last week has his first carry of the day. It's a pretty productive one. A gain of eight, excuse me, up to the 27 yard line. Brings up a second down and two for Holy Cross and big risk that time, but it does extend this drive and those can be kind of demoralizing for a defense as they're staying on here way long once again. Especially with the heat out there, it is humid, especially in this booth. <laughs> Had a hot week and field temperature got to be even hotter with that turf. Two by one to Sluka's left. He'll have another pass, he's been doing it here early. Sluka gonna pull it down, past the 25, he gets up all the way inside the red zone. Mini helicopter there gets him a first down for Holy Cross. Nice job that time by Sluka to improvise, but a flag is down in the backfield. Oh, that's and gonna come back. And this one is coming back, making the second penalty for Eric Sean, the left guard. And it will come back all the way to the 40, where Holy Cross had their first down. So, oh, excuse me, the 37, where it'll be third down and 12. So, Holy Cross seeming to, to exemplify a little bit of what we saw from BC last week with these untimely penalties that really serve as drive killers. Yeah, uh, let's see if that penalty actually will be a drive killer, but right now it looks like it. They run quickly after the penalty. Change the play. Justin Shorter is in with the tight ends. Jalen Coker is ahead of Phoenix Dixon. Fuller's in the backfield with Sluka. They'll fake it to him. Matthew rolls out to his left. Past the 40, he's done it again. Kalenge can't catch him, but Batson can right around the 15. No so, penalty, no problem for Holy Cross. And another big run from Sluka has them up just beyond the 15 at the 16, 2.30 to go in this opening quarter. The defense has to make some adjustments here to contain Sluka because their big plays have come because of him. No spy that time as Cam Arnold trots back on here. Donovan Ezeraku nearly had a sack of Sluka, but the shifty quarterback for Holy Cross, the senior from Locust Valley, able to get out of it. New set of downs from the 16 as Holy Cross now operates on the red zone. It'll be Jordan Fuller looking for the end zone again. Won't get there, able to take it up five yards down to the 11. This has been a great drive for Holy Cross here, uh, trying to emulate what BC did on their first drive. They've got a lot of time of possession here, about five minutes on the ball. We've got 7-0 to Boston College with 140 to go here in the first quarter. And thanks for doing my job there for me, Jacob. As Fuller will try to do his job here. Basically out to the 10, a stiff arm of Jones is not enough to break him. He gets down to the nine before he's pushed out of bounds. Gain a one that time, oh, excuse me, gain a two that time. Makes it third down and one from the nine. Clock does tick here, but they can get a first down and extend this drive even further, Jacob. So we already see BC potentially losing that time of possession here. Let's see if BC can get a stop here and end this drive. Can they stand tall, bend, but not break? They'll trot off another DB. Pupil is the only safety. Jones alone on Byron Shipman. They stack the box, Shipman in motion. They'll fake it to him, Sluka gonna do it himself. A flag flies, might be a holding, but let's see what happens. It appears as though he got the first down. Let's check on that little yellow hanky around the 15. <laughs> and just off the signal, will be holding on the offense. Booze rain down from a surprisingly large Holy Cross crowd here at Alumni. Yeah, there's certainly a big sea of purple in the stands today. Uh, a lot of people made the trek over to BC to watch their Holy Cross Crusaders play. The left tackle, Pat McMutry, charged with the holding there. And again, it's third down, but we have not seen the penalties shake Holy Cross up to this point. Third and 13 now from the 19. Gonna have to get a first down to extend this drive. My key to this play, do not let Sluka run. You cannot. If he runs, he's going to get the first down. De Palma is joined by Batson, who comes into Arnold's spot. Phoenix Dixon moves across the line. Sluka will not run. He'll have a wide open man instead. Up to the 45, staying up for the touchdown. 
Phoenix Dixon, potentially a full, excuse me, technically a fullback on the roster. He floats just like Kyle Juszczyk all the way to the end zone and Holy Cross has yet again capitalized on another penalty from 19 yards out, they punch it in, and Jacob, we have a tie game. Yeah, that was a great touchdown. Way to extend that play, extending his arms to uh, get into the end zone there was the fantastic receiver for a Holy Cross. And who was that on the touchdown there? That was Phoenix Dixon, the tight end, the senior from Linden, Michigan. Caught a pass in the FCS NCAA playoff game versus South Dakota State, a game that Holy Cross would lose, but has his first reception of the year there, and it's a touchdown for Holy Cross of 19 yards to even up this game at seven. Although, Jacob, they have yet to put the points on the board. They might call him down here. Oh, it, that'd be he interesting had to, he had to, to see. put his hand down, if you could see my hand on the screen here, right around the five yard line. They'll switch sides, we'll take a break, and we'll have a touchdown call or not for you when we return. Back now as we start the second quarter, waiting for a ruling. They've yet to put the points on the board, and so it does not look like it's gonna be a touchdown. Although, I'm, I'm very guilty of this, Jacob, of, of speaking early. <laughs> and last week when um, we had the interception, or called back, um, that, that George Tack has had go off his hands, I was having this whole speech about how the, the game was over, and then the game was extended, got all the way overtime. So they will not have a touchdown here, and good thing I did not speak early. Don't speak too soon, Gio. As Sluka will have a Y trying to get the crowd up as now they're in the Holy Cross section. A stacked box from Boston College. Let's see if they can punch it in from the two. Movement around the line from Sean Morris, their graduate tight end. Fuller trying to get into the end zone again. He's in. And this time, it is indeed a touchdown for Jordan Fuller and Holy Cross. Some formalities afterwards. Boston College defensive tackle George Rooks getting into it with Sluka after the play. Regardless, as this sun comes out on the north end zone, it's a tie game here in Chestnut Hill. 
Yeah, uh, don't get me wrong, there is still some bad blood between these two teams. I saw some shoving after that uh, two-yard score for Jordan Fuller. That'll be his sixth touchdown of the year? That would be his sixth touchdown of the year. Sluka hands off to Fuller, two yards, and he's in. Drive that spans eight minutes, 51 seconds. Ridden, with, ridden excuse me, with a couple penalties, does not phase Holy Cross. Here comes Pal Palenzuela with the kick. Right there, and it's good. Seven, seven, our score here from Chestnut Hill. Phoenix Dixon, he'll have the, forever have his ghost touchdown in 2023, his senior year, as Fuller snatches it from him. It's seven, seven, Holy Cross ties it after a long drive. We're yeah, that was, see, oh, sorry, that was a weird way to go about it there uh, because he did have that touchdown. Phoenix did have that touchdown. He celebrated that touchdown. The Holy Cross faithful in the, in the crowd definitely celebrated that touchdown. But then all of a sudden they were going the other way and it wasn't a touchdown. So it was very interesting how that definitely went. Definitely messes with your mind. Regardless, our score is tied. We'll be back in a few with Boston College trying to add to their score here. As we return here, 14.56 to go in this first half. Holy Cross ties it up thanks to Jordan Fuller's sixth touchdown of the year from two yards away. And Holy Cross is coming to town for the first time since 1979. But BC, and, and to, to commemorate the occasion, honored a longtime assistant coach, Bill McGovern, who sadly passed away in May. An All-American player at Holy Cross, he spent 16 seasons across two stints, stints, excuse me, on the Boston College coaching staff. Also a legend at UCLA, as many people know, and, and a great tribute they had to him before the game today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great way to honor uh, such, a, such a huge legend for both of these schools. And uh, it's always nice to see, uh, see that happen, especially when these schools have such a historic relationship with one, with, uh, one another. Well, it's historic, but it looks brand new today, 40 years later. The 85th matchup between Boston College and Holy Cross is tied right now at seven as Palenzuela out to kick to O'Keefe and Williams once more. Holy Cross sidelines got a tradition of jumping before every kickoff. <laughs> Love to see the enthusiasm there. Again, BC all business. As the kick is out from Palenzuela, It'll go to O'Keefe this time, he'll feel it for the three. O'Keefe trying to get the angle up to the 20s. Knocked out around the 18-yard line. Flag does fly after the play. We'll see what that's for. Yeah, the line, I didn't the see line a flag. Judge that one. I didn't see a flag on that play, so we'll see what happens the boss, here. The BC sideline kind of blocked it, but just I saw him throw it out of his pocket. And the refs are talking it around the 30, excuse me, the 25-yard line. And they'll get Holy Ooh. Cross for a late hit. So BC will start with some better real estate than they expected. Late hit on Holy Cross around the 18-yard line. Castellanos trots out for a second drive. And after 
a, a kind of good mix there of runs and passes. What are you expecting to see from Shimko's guys today? So uh, or in the second drive? they're going to run the ball a lot, I feel like. And um, if they do have to make any passes in the air, it'll be a short screen pass to uh, O'Keefe or Griffin or uh, Jaden Williams will uh, go for a long route. Maybe they'll try to hit him. So, so you heard the call for a late hit. Or maybe it was on the receiving team. Oh, it was on the receiving team. So Boston College going to be moved back to the nine to start this drive. From the nine, Castellanos will hand off to Grobeshow. He's been the workhorse so far. Able to work it six yards up to the 15-yard line. Second and four. Looms for BC. Now, that penalty, as we were making, again, I speak early, we're making it out to seem as though Boston College was getting the advantage from that penalty. Again, not to be. Mm. Yeah, uh, we'll see what BC can do after that minor setback on the kickoff. They'll say he went down to the 14 as Robichaud is to the right of Castellanos. Oh, a long option as Castellanos will hold it. Cut back again. He'll try to cut back, but he won't be able to stay up long enough as Holy Cross rallies to him quick. In on that tackle was William Robinson, the freshman defensive lineman. Joined by Damon Donalds, the junior from Naples, Florida. And early here, a third and one. As the clock runs under 14 minutes, we're tied at seven. Maybe a, a quarterback run here or a handoff to the running back. I a believe spot, that's Robichaud. A spot the ball at the 19. It is indeed Robichaud who gets the ball here. Nice. And he will be able to charge forward easily, picking up the first down. Right around the 23-yard line he goes. New set of downs for Boston College. They move the six again. Uh, Robichaud, as you said, is the workhorse today. A uh, very unexpected turn of events for this Eagles offense, but a welcome change as he has uh, really thrived so far to start this game. Got a couple of carries now up to four. As they'll split Cameron Barfield out wide, three by two to Castellanos' right. Nickel formation from Holy Cross as Castellanos will throw. Stands all day at the 15. Now he uses the quick feet. Going to get up to the 25 and go up around the 29-yard line. Nice job there from Castellanos to not force it, pull it down, and do what he does. And we see Halfley and Steve Shimko allowing Castellanos to be himself here early. Yeah, I really like the way that, uh, as you said, Tommy has that patience with the ball. He doesn't immediately throw it. He doesn't immediately run. He takes a look up, sees what he's got. If there are people in his grill right away, he's going to take off. <laughs> like how you described that. Taji Johnson split out of the X. He's joined by Devin Haskins. As Castellanos will defer to Barfield this time. And Cameron Barfield has his first carry of the day. Gets it up to the 31-yard oh, line. See where they spot that one, but it's early a third and one. Um, a good start for the Eagles on this drive after that setback. Uh, we've got a third and one here. Look for them to uh, run the ball once again. They'll trot out a new lineman here. Jack Conley takes the place of Hergel. Third and one from the 31, 11.57 to go. Franklin is in the backfield with Castellanos and Garwo. Yep. Oh, no. Robichaud still, and it's Kai Robichaud who's got the ball still on his feet. Robichaud showing the toughness to be able to work it all the way down to the 45 at the 44. He's showing shades of A.J. Dillon running all over Holy Cross there. Uh, the quadzilla, as people like to call him. Dillon was in attendance last week. This week he watches from home as he gets ready to play tomorrow for the Green Bay Packers. But he surely liked that one as Kai Robichaud extends this drive, moves the sticks down to the 44-yard line. Nice game of 13 that time. O'Keefe on the field as well as Williams here. Here comes Castellanos. He'll fake to Barfield. Gonna take all kinds of time. Yep. Good pressure. Oh, oh, O'Keefe was rallied too quickly. Fans want a flag. They won't get one as O'Keefe drops that one. And Castellanos found him well enough. He's got to make the throw earlier there. O'Keefe was open for a, a little more time than uh, Castellanos thought. Maybe a little faster as well. That one kind of came out with a little bit of a little rainbow. For at least as much of a rainbow as a bullet pass can be. Second down now from the 44. Griffin will trot out onto the field. Lewis Bond is in the F. Lined up in the slot with Terrence Spence. 
Barfield fakes from Tascalinos. Now Tommy's got it himself, trying to get the angle to the outside. He won't be able to get much more than a few as he rolls down to the 49-yard line. Excuse me, the 48 is the official spot. Gain of four, leaves a third and six for Boston College. So what I've seen from Tommy this game, um, they're not giving him that much space to take off and run the ball. He hasn't had that many big chunk plays like he did last week. So let's see if he can throw the ball or just hand it off to one of his running backs as Roby shows in the back. We'll see what the call is here on third down. They stack two to the right. It's Griffin and Bond. Roby show the third down back once again, and he gets the ball here. Kai going towards the sticks. We'll see where he is. Looks like they're going to mark him a yard or two short. Castellanos looking to coach Halfley. They're going to stay on the field, whether it's fourth down or not. And it is, Jacob, fourth and one now from the 47. Yeah, Jack Connolly makes his way onto the field as well. Uh, he is a left guard for the Eagles. They got some extra beef on the line as Hergel is out there again. Takis and Franklin on the ends of the line. Robichaud behind Castellanos and the pistol. The lone receiver is Johnson. Cap snout. A fourth down run for Robichaud, right up the gut, right to a first down that time as Kai continues his big day. We go under 10 minutes, and again, Boston College able to hold this ball, extend that drive, first and 10 from the 45, new set of downs, Jacob. What do you like about that run? Of, uh, it, I mean, you can't, I can't find the words to describe it. It's just so different from last week, a tale of two different teams here as they'll run out again. O'Keefe is in the slot this time. Barfield in the backfield. Castellanos going to tend on his horse, launch it up. Jaden Williams is the recipient, yeah, and a flag flies. I saw that immediately, pass interference there on um, Curtis Harris Lopez, the junior from New Jersey. The team leader with two forced fumbles last season has one of his first penalties of the year as Castellanos able to chuck it down to the 10 yard line and BC will be set up beautifully yeah, inside that, the 10 at the eight. That was actually Terrence Spence on the penalty oh, there. I saw me. that immediately. You can't get away with that in today's game um, with all these the scrutiny on the referees. Spence joined by Harris Lopez with the penalty does go to Terrence Spence, the senior from Ringwood, New Jersey. And Boston College will not be as far, oh it's not a spot foul in college. So they will be a 15-yard penalty up to the 30. First and 10, 9.08 to go, 7-7. Seven, seven. Castellanos goes back to the air. Pressure, he's got to get on it out to the right. A fighting, oh, holy cross, and Castellanos! Oh, as he gives him a look back. That Put was, on the brakes that time with the juke. That was absolutely filthy from Castellanos. I love the celly there as he looks back behind the player that he just dusted. Hard plant, broken ankles, and Castellanos able to see it himself. Finally, some life in this BC offense. Something we hadn't seen all of last year, except in that NC State game and all of last week. Talk about getting this crowd excited after a penalty and then that. Man, they're on their feet now. From the right hash on the 26, second down and six. Castellanos has a man, low ball, caught by Williams. First down yardage and more for Jaden Williams. He's able to work it inside the 20, down to the 16 of first and 10 for Boston College. As now they'll operate from the red zone for a second time in as many drives. Yeah, this is uh, a very impressive drive from the Eagles again as they uh, go to the air this time. That is, uh, I think that's Jaden Williams' first catch of it the is. day there. Uh, a great gain for BC as they get the first down. And going back to last game, he has caught the last three balls that have been thrown his way, including the touchdown to tie it at 21 last week. Cam Barfield has his second carry. Will not be as fruitful as the first as he's able to take it maybe down to the, past the 15. Official spot is to the 14, a gain of two, second and eight. And we'll see Castellanos in complete command of this offense. Just look like he's running the show out there. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I'm watching him in the huddles. Uh, he's re, uh, reading those plays out to his guys. Everybody seems to be on the same page. The offense is clicking on all cylinders right now. It's a great sign for this Eagles team. Nice variation of runs and passes, although they have committed to running the ball. We've got O'Keefe next to uh, Castellanos there. And Robichaud is split out wide, so we see the creativity from Shimko here. Let's see what it yields. It'll be a run directly to O'Keefe. 
Ryan O'Keefe got the speed, breaks it open, all the way home for the touchdown. The trickery yields six for Boston College. As with seven minutes to go in this one, Ryan O'Keefe is in the end zone for the first time as an Eagle. And who would have thought it would have been a run and not a pass, but that's the creativity of Steve Shimko coming to life as BC scores their second touchdown in as many drives. Extra point from Litton will make it 14-7 Eagles. Yeah, uh, not to uh, toot my own horn there, but I did notice that he was right there next to Castellanos in the backfield. So uh, I was really looking there forward to go. that We're play. We're right next to the coaches, but maybe you got to walk out at halftime. <laughs> Litton able to put it through. Boston College doing what they're supposed to here early. It's 14-7 Boston College. Bell rings from the student sections as we will take a quick break. O'Keefe able to punch it in from 14 yards out. Bounce to the outside, 14-7 in favor of BC. We'll see Holy Cross get their second chance when we get back. 7.06 to go in the game here in the second, uh, sorry, not in the game, in the second uh, half, uh, quarter. Half, half, <laughs> half, and half. BC is back. BC is ready to kick. It'll be Liam Connor doing the kickoffs today. He'll boot it to Justin Shorter, who is back deep in the end zone. And Saluka and the Crusaders will be joined by the Eagles defense on the field now. As Jacob, what do you expect to see from Saluka and Chesney and this Crusader offense in the second drive? So, once again, uh, Saluka is going to take off and run the ball. That's what they did last drive. Um, we actually, we left uh, that, that tight end open, like wide open, and then right in the middle Phoenix of the field. Dixon. Phoenix Dixon wide open in the middle of the field last time. The defense can't let that happen again. Kick is away from Connor, and it will be a touchback. Ball coming out to the 25, maybe a late hit. One of the Holy Cross coaches is absolutely furious, but the flag stays in the pocket. And out come the Crusaders, met by Matthew Sluka. Looking at Bob Chesney here a bit, his sixth Holy Cross season, he has done nothing but win, win, and then win some more. 104 and 42 his career record, but at Holy Cross, he's won 70% of his games, 37 and 17. Has it been over a year since Holy Cross lost in the uh, regular season? I think, I think it has. It has, yep. Uh, they won all their regular season games last year, and they uh, come into BC here. A bit of a risk, uh, given that long winning streak, or maybe not. The last time out, Jordan Fuller able to cap off an 8 minute and 51 second drive, two yards out from the end zone. Got in for his sixth touchdown of the year. Five last week and one 
this week. We're hoping for BC's sake that he doesn't have another five spot today. Although he's one sixth, or excuse me, one fifth of the way there. Takes some time before getting out to, to try um, to the play here. With these quick clock rules, it incentivizes play calling in the huddle before the drive rather than taking time to huddle and then get up to the line and feel rushed. Yeah, uh, do you mind explaining that new uh, clock so rule? So that clock I, I honestly rule have took no idea. 10 seconds off the play clock. So teams now have to get to the line a little faster. They have to call their, have their plays in mind and they're trying to speed up the game. The other big rule was that the clock does not stop after a first down and thus it's in the final two minutes trying to emulate the NFL a little bit, who does not have any clock stops at their first downs unless it's out of bounds in the final two minutes. So with those two things combined, and maybe 10 seconds is it, right, with the, with the play clock number, it, it looks as though, just from, our, just from our spots up here, that there is 25 seconds on the play clock, 35 seconds last year, so 10 would be the difference. I am, I am a huge fan of that, let me tell you, because last season, uh, sitting in the student section, Man, it is hot out there, and just watching them huddle for a minute every single play, it's a little much for the fans, so I'm a huge fan of that rule. Capacity of 44,700 today. We heard sold out before the game, as they'll t-shirt toss to an absolutely packed student section. If you've been to the stadium before, you can picture where the retired numbers are. It's kind of the end of the student section. You get a little shallow there, Jacob. It, there is not a seat to be had from the American flag by the retired numbers all the way really, really right under us. It's really only empty up here by our, our seats. So it is an absolute mayhem jungle fest here at Boston College today. As they'll get to the play, Sluka will start with a pass. In there was Ruiz. Now he's got to get some on his horse and move it. Matthew Sluka able to make something from nothing as he always does. Going from the 20 to the 36. Nice play from Sluka. Gets him up to the, oh no, 41 the official spot. He's looking like Lamar Jackson out there, or yeah. at least that Eagles defense is making him look like Lamar Jackson out there. We've got to finish our sacks once again. Sluka will come back again. I'll go two guys on his right side out wide. The lone man on his left on with Elijah Jones is Justin Shorter. We'll get a run here to Fuller. Not as big as the run from Sluka. Splits the difference five yards up to the 46. A second and five. Looms for Holy Cross. It's Sheeta Salah in on that tackle. He missed all year after suffering an ACL injury in week one against Rutgers last season. And now he's come back and made quite the impact on this Eagle defense. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him out there. Uh, missed him last season. So... It was a pretty banged up Eagles squad last year, but uh, I'm glad he's back. Eagles have an extra DB out there. That's Jalen Cheek. They'll run dime with a one by three to the right. Empty set for Sluka. He deals to Shorter, makes the catch before he's able to be pushed out of bounds by John Pupil. Right around the 50 yard line. That'll, See where they spot. It'll it looks be like that'll be good for a first down. Will be good for a first down. Yard short at the 49. First and 10, 540 to go in the half. And how crucial is it Outside, you obviously want to get a stop every time, but if Holy Cross were to score here, they get the ball at half, you're going to be left with maybe the way these games are going, the way these drives are going, under a couple minutes to go in this second half. You've got to get something before the half, if that's the case. Yeah, the Eagles are going to have to hurry if they get the ball back. Quite obviously looking for a stop. Shipman's in motion as Sluka will look to go again, going to stretch it over the middle, and Coker had it in his hands and dropped it. Cole Batson in for the reinforcements as Elijah Jones is able to stop that play. And he's still telling Cole, hey, you had to be there earlier. Able to get lucky that time as Coker, the very able receiver, drops that one. Maybe one get lucky for BC. Yeah, our uh, secondary was looking a little rough there as um, Coker was just wide open right in the middle of the field. Um, it looks like the Holy Cross offensive coordinator... Dean Kennedy. Dean Kennedy is uh, really exploiting that weakness in the De uh, Eagles offense uh, as he noticed on that last drive. Took a shot on first down. Instead, it's second and 10. Still from the 49, 14-7 Boston College. 5-12 to go on this one. We see Vinny De Palma as the leader of this defense, but Elijah Jones has taken a step there, and Chesney is out on the field. And it's going to be a delay of game against Holy Cross. It took too long to call the play, so less clock. 
First time it has its victim here in Alumni Stadium. It was a lay of game as Saluka continues to talk to Woods about questioning that call. And now we do get a timeout here from Holy Cross. So uh, we're going to take a quick break here. 5.12 to go in the first half. Thanks for listening. Get an early Mr. Brightside today, Jake. Are we trying to capture it? Yeah, was, Singing trying, will continue trying. into this play. Second and 10 from the 49. Let's see if Sluka can open up his eager eyes here. Handoff goes to Forrest. It'll be a fake. And Netowak Paula able to Finally. bury him at the 50 yard line. Finally, BC with a stop uh, on the quarterback, Sluka there. We haven't been able to stop him all game, but uh, that was a great play by the BC defense to finally break through and get to the Holy Cross. Fake so good it fooled me. Yeah. Did not fool Neto Akpala that time. Third down and 10. No gain to the 49 on that play. Under five to go in this game. Bry Byron Shipman is alone with Jones on the left side. Shorter from the slot. Sluka will roll to his right, right off the snap. Got a cut back, back to his left. Missed tackle from Rooks. Sluka gonna do it himself, but not before Shida Salah is able to bury him right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and long for Holy Cross and expect a punt here from the Crusaders. Nice job there by Shida Salah. Wow, uh, yeah, what a, what, a, what a fantastic play by the BC defense there. We almost got a sack on that play, uh, but we couldn't quite George get Rooks him. had his hand right on his shoulder. He did, he did, but... Um, he tried to do his usual shifty move, but it just wasn't working out for him. And now they've got a fourth down punt coming for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Patrick Haney, the punter, the graduate from Verona, New Jersey, will punt to Jaden Williams. Huge stop for the Eagles there. Punt is away. Williams watches it fly out of bounds right at the 11 yard line. BC's got 338 
from the 11-yard line. They got to go 89 yards to punch it in. They want to extend their lead to 21-7. We'll see if they can do it after this. Actually, well, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's stay on, Jacob, as Castellanos gets ready to come out for the third drive of the day. Has a pair of touchdowns. He hasn't done any throwing. And what, what are you expecting to see from him on this drive as they try it out there? Uh, he's going to try to run the ball. Um, let's see if he can break through. He's had a few chances to, but he's either fell or the defense got to him. So we're going to get to the line now, see what he can do. 338 from the 20. Castellanos, hands off. Robichaux, the recipient, up to the 25-yard line. Passed it maybe a little to the 26. So uh, a game like this leads me to uh, ask the question, what is BC's plan with their running backs? We've got three able running backs on this roster. I guess we're doing like kind of like a timeshare thing. We have with, not uh, seen, Pat Garwa was the running back in the opening play and has not seen the field since. Robichaux gets it again here. They'll bunch three to the right. Jeremiah Franklin is out there and let's see, we got some movement from the BC line. Couple of flags fly, is this one coming back? I'd say it's on BC here, we might get a five yard penalty, yeah, and I'm right there. Kyle Hergel is the, uh, is the perpetrator there. That's his third penalty of the season, he had a unnecessary roughness call where uh, maybe some instigated some fighting with NIU, but here, knock on wood, that's the first penalty for Boston College in this game. Yeah, uh, a very disciplined Eagles team, again, knock on wood so far in this game. Let's see if they can uh, continue that. Robichaud's been the horse, eight for 46 and a touchdown. He's out there again, but split out wide as they go to O'Keefe from the running back hole once more. Past the 30 goes O'Keefe all the way down inside the 35 at the 38. Nice job there by Ryan O'Keefe. We get a big first down, and Jacob, they, they're keen to use him in any way they can. Yeah, and uh, we got a quick play here from the Eagles. Castellanos gonna go right back to his receiver that time, Bond. Able to catch the low ball, makes the adjustment, puts his knees right on the 45, and with 2.28 to go, remember, no two-minute warning in college, it'll be second down and one. Do have to get here with some pace, and if Boston College wants to get at least three before giving the ball back to Holy Cross to start the half, they're going to have to get moving. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can make a big pass at some point during this drive, second and one. Castellanos will throw for a ninth time. Wants O'Keefe over the middle, and said will go long. Who wants Bond? He just misses him. Lewis Bond was open with Terrence Spence in coverage right around the 20. Would have been a big hitter if they could have connected. No dice that time for Tommy as he sails Lewis Bond. He's uh, third he down wide one. open. He really was wide open on that play. Maybe got a little excited when he saw him that open. Just sailed it, put a little too much mustard under that one. Uh, let's see if uh, they can get this first down here. Uh, probably a run to get the first down. Let's see if he either keeps the ball or hands it off to. On third down, they need a yard. Three receivers split out to the right. They will go to Robichaux, and a yard he does indeed get down to the 47, but they have to move. They're gonna have to hurry here with 157 on the clock. Gain of three with a new set of downs down to the 47 yard line. Under two to go now as you hit the 150 mark. Robichaux stands tall with Castellanos in the pocket. Tommy's going to go for it all. Williams is there. Williams has a big game down to the 10. He misses the first. He gets the second as Tommy Castellanos redeems himself, and he finds Jaden Williams for another big hitter, trying to run it down to the line. Jacob, what'd you like? Um, so as I said before, we were looking to just convert one big pass on this play, and our deep threat, Jaden Williams, of course, is the one to come up with it. Doing what he does best is Castellanos. Able to find Jaden Williams. It goes from the 47 to the six. A 41 yard rainbow as Tommy now has first and goal for his Eagles. Six yards away from making it 21 to seven in favor of BC. Uh, it looks like BC called a timeout here with uh, 142 to go in the half. Let it simmer, they'll silence the Holy Cross crowd. Two timeouts remain for Boston College and with 1.42 to go, Jacob, as we'll get right to the break after this, it's going to be, there's there going to be some time, excuse me, for Holy Cross to potentially still add to the scoring. So what was a low scoring contest last week through one half now becomes a bit of a shootout. Yeah. Uh, again, it's 
I like that word, shootout, is a great word to describe a game like this. Both of these high-powered offenses are going to try to score as frequently and as uh, many points as they possibly can. So uh, let's see if the Eagles can kind of conserve the clock, maybe run the ball a few plays. We do have four downs. This is definitely four down territory for this Eagles offense. So um, let's try and run the ball in. You got six to go, Jacob. When they try that back out on the field, what do you like there from the call? Or what do you think Strimco will do with this play? Um, so I'm going to look for Kai Robichaux in the backfield uh, uh, for a handoff to him. I'm going to look for a Tommy Castellanos, maybe a play action pass with um, either Griffin or O'Keefe or um, Bond or Johnson to get into that end zone and um, get, get open. But uh, the Holy Cross defense has been pretty good on pass coverage so far, um, and Tommy has missed a few throws. So I think the safe bet would be either to keep the ball in Tommy's hands or hand it off to Kai Robichaux for the score. Now, Robichaux is a bigger back for his height. He's 6'0", 216. But he, so he really does serve as a power back. But do you see Garwo here, maybe? Do you think that maybe they're saving him for strictly goal line situations? I Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they brought out Garwo here. Um, he is normally the guy that they feed it to close to the end zone. So... I am very much excited to see what Shimko has to offer here on this first down play. It'll be a questionable call, but Tomix Castellanos able to blow this drive and this game open with a 41-yard dime to Jaden Williams that gets it out around the six-yard line, right at the six-yard line, in fact. And in the huddle, it looks to be like Couple personnel guys out there. Robichaux staying out. They'll take a 35 more seconds to talk about this. And we'll take a short break with them. Lining back up now after the big pass, Jacob. Castellanos has hit eight of his first 12 passes for 109 yards. That's also a great looking stat line for a, for a first half. Also looking for his first touchdown, especially when you think about it, he threw 138 last week. Robuchot does get the rock here first. Charging towards the end zone. Can he get there? Castellanos tries to push him forward. Not going to be able to do so. And Boston College now keen to take their time as Holy Cross it appears, has burned a timeout. Yeah, Holy Cross takes a timeout here just to conserve that clock, and uh, we're going to take a quick break here as we go back to timeout. Another quick break, another quick huddle. Holy Cross is back and so is Boston College. Be second down and goal from the two. Four yard gain that time from Robichaux has him at 50 yards for this first half. Seeking his second yard, second touchdown here, excuse me. He's two yards away from it. Robichaux looking for the deuce. But going forward, he's not gonna be able to get much more than that. Maybe right back to the line as Castellano's looking to the ref, he's a little confused. Maybe he saw something we didn't. And another timeout there called by Holy Cross as well. Keen to take every second of this clock. Officially, it's no gain with 128 on the board. It'll be third down and goal from the two now. See, I don't mind that uh, play call because it forces Holy Cross to take another timeout. But at the same time, we've got to get the ball into the end zone here. So you think maybe a throw, risk and completion if you are going for it on fourth down? Uh, on fourth down, yes, but... We do have another down here. I think we're going to run the ball here, maybe try to get it in. If we do, that'd be great news. But if not, I don't know what we go for well, on maybe, fourth down. Maybe they try to, to, to get him off guard, maybe run with Castellanos. 
Yeah, design maybe runs. like a little misdirection, we've, we've fake handoff a, kind of thing. Yeah, a very low number of design runs for Thomas Castellanos in this game. It's true. He's kind of improvised on pass plays and done it himself, but really not very quick yeah. to defer to Castellanos. So line it up from the right this time. Tommy changing the play at the line. He's in the pistol with Robichaud on for a third straight play. They'll fake. Castellanos easily flips his attackers and a third touchdown for Boston College. Going to extend this lead to two possessions. George Takis from Thomas Castellanos as he gets his first reception of the game and the year. Makes it 21-7 Boston College. And man, look at the momentum that Boston College has so far. Tale of different teams today, Jacob. Yeah, we're looking much more fluid on the offensive side of the ball. We, we had George Takis finally making a catch on offense uh, rather than those drop passes last week. A very much improved Eagles offense as they are going to hit the field goal to make it 21-7. Ring the bell once more. Band is out and playing. They're proud. This is what the fans came to see. Packed house at Alumni Boston College is pouring it on Holy Cross early. Our score is 21-7. A two-yard pass from Thomas Castellanos finds George Takis in the end zone and 123 to go. Eagles are in full command of this one here in the Battle of Massachusetts. Yeah, it's a very exciting game so far. Uh, a lot of offense. We've seen a lot of big plays. And uh, now let's, let's put this game away. We are BC, not Penn State today, as Connor, or excuse me, Liam Connor will come back to kick it to Shorter and Gregory. The student section is absolutely bumping right now. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, normally it clears out by around this point. Couldn't have put it any better than that. And think, 24 or, or however many hours ago, a week ago today, it was 7 nothing NIU. And now Boston College has more than tripled that total here in the first half of play. Holy Cross confused by this BC offense as much as they are by the defense. Odd kick from... Liam Connor that time. It came out spinning horizontally rather than vertically. And now some festivities after the play will likely draw a penalty on Boston College based on the reaction of the Holy Cross sideline. But we'll wait for the official call from Marcus Woods. Yeah, I've noticed on every single special teams play, uh, these guys are trying to get into the heads of their opponents. Oh, man. Um, In incredibly. So I've seen a lot of shoving uh, after kickoffs and punts. This game is incredibly tactical mentally as it is with, with the playbook and the strategy. And I think, uh, let's see what the calls are. Aye. So a pair of penalties from Boston College that time will put the ball in beautiful field position for Holy Cross. Lit, or excuse me, Connor did kick it out of bounds. So and, first and one was on Connor, second yep. one was a 15-yarder. Uh, so uh, they're going to start at the 50-yard line, and they've got one minute and 23 seconds to score and no timeouts. So let's see what this Kennedy-led offense, led by Matthew Sluka, can do on this uh, drive. Tyler Purdy's gonna be the first running back out for Holy Cross. We have not seen a reception today from Justin Shorter, who is their speedster. He had a reception for 11 yards in the win over Merrimack, but Jalen Coker had that ball dropped to the 25, and then he's only had one reception outside of that. So BC has done an incredible job in the pass defense today from a secondary that does have a lot of question marks around it. I, I, wouldn't, say, um, I wouldn't say they've done I think you're giving them a little too much credit okay. as uh, that was a dropped pass last time, but let's see what they can do. Sluka will throw. Got to get some points here. He's got all kinds of time in the pocket. Just chucks it out of bounds. There was, there was a good job by the secondary. They were all over that receiver Proving, proving me right, but I do agree with you that there was a drop as a flag flies late. Let's see what that's for. It's right around the secondary at the 39. A lot of time to decipher what these calls are because of the referees. They keep meeting in the, in the middle of the field, which is good to get it right. 
And that flag will be picked up, Jacob, so that play will stand as called an incompletion and a second down and 10 from the midfield strike right at the 50 on the right hash. Here comes Sluka. From the gun, he's joined by Jordan Forrest. Two by two. Shorter's in the slot, yet to get a reception. Jalen Cheek is the extra DB on for Boston College. And now the snap. Sluka has time, a little less than last time, but he hits Coker this time, and he's able to hang on to it. Jones instantly on the tackle, and the second catch for Jalen Coker yeah, is going to be enough for a first down right to the 40-yard line. Coker stops on a dime there and drops to make that play, and they've got to hurry up here. Hurry up offense with 115. clock is running. Sluka changing the play, oh, it's a snap as he right as he turns around. He's got all sorts of time, gonna stretch it off the right. Shipman is there, Shorter's got it with a flag. And one for Holy Cross that time. What let's, a catch. Let's see what the flag is, but Justin Shorter enters this game in a big way. I think it's pass interference, yeah. It was and it is, the end one penalty. does go. Gonna go against Jalen Cheek, who was in coverage of Justin Shorter that time. And Matt Sluka had all sorts of time in the pocket to be able to hit Shorter. Tough throw and an even tougher catch for Justin Shorter. Yeah, Holy Cross once again exposes the Eagles secondary. That time though, they're able to come up with the ball. Officially it's a gain of 33. So Looks first like BC's and, calling a timeout here. First and goal from the seven is BC will call a timeout to discuss the strategy here in the red zone defense. We'll take this time out with them. Come back, 21-7. Holy Cross looking to change that before half. That was a review, looks like, Jacob, as we get back out of this break here. 103 to go in this first half as Boston College will retain both of its timeouts, although amazingly, we said last time that Holy Cross would get some time to drive down, and now with 103 to go, Holy Cross from the seven, if you were to let up a score here, whether it's three or seven, Jacob, BC could have some time with two timeouts. Well, yeah, but... Um Oh, that, that is a great point. I didn't think of it like that. But uh, Holy Cross does get the ball back at half. The review preserves that timeout for Boston College. Sluka has two receivers bunch up on the left as whistles blow. And now BC does take the timeout. So if you were going to save it for a drive, maybe you didn't like what you see. But timeout called by Boston College. They're yeah. down to one with 56 seconds to go. Yeah, I guess um, Abdul Rahim does not like what he saw there uh, at the line of scrimmage, so uh, they're gonna call a timeout there. Those are co-DCs, Azar Abdul-Rahim and Sean Duggan, who Azar Abdul-Rahim has said on multiple occasions that his job is simplified so much by this secondary, especially as he's the DB's coach as well, that he almost doesn't have to, to coach, and they are so accountable, and they're so ready to police themselves that they, he does their, his job for them. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a little more out of our, uh, out of our secondary um, going into the second half. But, hey, we've only let up seven points in the entire half. You know, that's a, that's, you know, that's a great start for this Eagles defense. So I'll give them some credit where credit is due as uh, the Holy Cross offense goes back out onto the field. Really the only stain on this secondary's rapport today, the 33-yard reception that just happened by Justin Shorter to put us where we are now. First down and goal from the seven-yard line, 56 to go. Holy Cross looking to get back in this game a little bit. They're down 21-7. Can change in the bat of an eye. Lots of green on the right for Sluka. Tyler, Jordan Fuller's in with him on the backfield. 
Sluka's got the ball. He's going to do it himself. Bounce out to the right. Missed tackle from Batson. Another tackle will not be enough to stop Sluka as he's in for the touchdown. Matthew Sluka does it himself from seven yards out. And with 46 seconds to go in this half, Holy Cross draws closer as they make it 21-14. Sluka once again proves how great he is on his feet. He was met by several BC defenders there, uh, some defenders that were bigger than him, but he just shoved them aside and forced his way into the, B, uh, into, uh, the uh, end zone there, and it's now 21 to 13. Let's see if they can convert on the extra point. Palenzuela is being helped with a hold by Patrick Hawney. Snap is coming from Christo Kelly. Snap, hold, and kick, all good. 21-14 is officially our score here with 46 to go in this second half. Boston College has a timeout to try and get some more, even if it's three, makes it a two possession game going into half and that certainly changes things, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely, it does change things. Um, as you said before, and as you said again before, this is going to be a shootout of a, of a football game here, um, not much uh, defense from uh, from either team except for that one stop by uh, the BC defense earlier in the yes, quarter. Exactly. Yeah. So and also you said we were giving them a little too much time. We gave them about what? A minute 30 seconds and immediately they start out on the 49 yard line. A quick 49 yard touchdown drive for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Let's see how BC answers. Imagine aggressiveness here from Coach Halfley and the staff as they are looking to add to their total with a shred of time still available in this get, in this first half, excuse me. Palenzuela is on the kick to Jaden Williams. Ryan O'Keefe joins him right at the 10. Could you imagine maybe a squib here from Holy Cross, get yeah. tactical with the kickoff. Try to take as much time off this clock for Boston College. And they will let, make Williams take it out. Oh, fair catch. Is that ball. a mistake? Why, why that might you, why be a mistake from Williams. He was not in the end zone. And by, by my knowledge of football, that is a that fair was a, catch at the fair, one yard line. A fair catch on a kickoff. Oh, that is a mistake Peculiar. from Jaden Williams. It preserves all 46 seconds, but now you have to drive 99 yards to the end zone and 60 yards to is, even get in range for Litton. Is BC going to take a knee here? Oh, what no, is, they gave the it to him. They gave it to him oh, right did. at the 25, so now crisis averted. As it looks like, maybe his back yeah. foot was there. Maybe, And maybe. smartly he knew he was backing up. Calls yeah. a fair catch, so Jaden Williams knows more than we do, obviously. Shows it there with the smart call of a fair catch. Three receivers are split out wide, including Takis in the slot. Kai Robichaux, he's been out there a lot today. He's out there again, and he gets his first reception of the game now from Castellanos. Up near the 30, going to take it out past the 31 to the 32. He'll go out of bounds there, stop the clock. 40 seconds to go here in the first half. Gain of seven, will make it second and three. Only takes six seconds, and if you can do that, quick, short plays that takes all time off the clock. They run same formation, same personnel. Castellano's going to stretch it this time. O'Keefe tried to make the play, and flags do indeed fly as it's likely pass interference going against Holy Cross this time. Uh, O'Keefe yeah. was jammed trying to climb the ladder there, and that ball from Castellanos a little inside had to lead him a little bit more, but it does draw the penalty, and Boston College going to get some help from the referees here. Yeah, that was a, uh, I believe it's a penalty on uh, Jake Jarmolich. It will be a J penalty oh. on Jake Jarmolich. My apologies. The that free is, safety for We're going to have to search Holy through the, the, the roster yeah. list again. Because Go through the I, phonetics one more time. Yeah. As Castellanos and company will line up after the penalty. Again, not a spot foul in college, so they will get a 15-yard penalty there, albeit a help to Boston College. A new set of downs from the 47. 35 seconds go as only five seconds come off the clock. Let's at least go for a uh, field goal here uh, with 35 seconds to go in the half. Kind of in no man's land right now, right around the 47 in between the two 40s. Certainly not four down territory. As Castellanos is back for a third straight throw. He's got a man this time, and Dino Tomlin has his first reception of the year. Mike, his father, the Steeler head coach, not in attendance, but he's definitely watching as he watches his son get his first reception. This clock now is running. First down for Boston College. 
Here comes Tommy, gonna try and get all seven. Griffin is in the end zone, and Griffin, with one hand, hauls it in. Or does he? A flag is down, that could be big. But Joe Griffin, if he's able to hang oh on, goodness. has the catch of the year for Boston College. That was, that was a one-handed grab by Griffin there. I don't know if he held on to it. While he was being tugged. It was a sick throw, by, I mean. Oh, Devin Haskins was in coverage, and let's see the replay board. The ball is out, okay. and it's not even close. And Haskins <laughs> quick to celebrate, although a penalty likely Fooled going me. against him here. Fooled me for sure. Oh, another pass interference call here by Holy Cross. It looks like discipline is a big issue by the, for the Crusaders, as it was for BC last week. We'll take a flip sides here. So a pair of penalties, or excuse me, a pair of pass interference penalties against the Crusaders have Boston College now with a changed mindset. 17 seconds on the clock. Griffin missed a big highlight reel touchdown there, but if they can get, what is it? Let's see what the clock is, 20 yards here in 17 seconds, they're gonna go into halftime with a 28 to 14 lead, Jacob. Yeah, uh, we've got a little bit more to go here on the drive. We're on the 20 yard line, 17 seconds to go in the half. Let's see what Tommy can do here. I'm excited. A base one by three, Takis in the slot, Griffin in the X up by Castellanos is left. Oh. Tommy looking for the end zone. Takis is there, he had it in his hands. Must have been knocked out. Curtis Harris Lopez, the safety for Boston, or excuse me, Holy Cross. Was in tight coverage of Takis that time, able to jar it loose. 6 7, George Takis, a transfer from Notre Dame. And a lot of times in a one on one, you don't see him fail to come up with it. That time, nice coverage from Harris Lopez to cause the incompletion. Yeah, um, some good D there by the secondary of Holy Cross uh, to bat that ball out of the air and out of the hands of Takis. Castellanos will stand tall in the pocket. Robichaud's been the running back all drive. Second and 10 from the 20. 12 to go, Castellanos bounced out to his left. Got to be wary of the time. He gets out of bounds and takes off six seconds in doing so. We've got six seconds here. What are you looking to do if you are um, Shimko here? So third and nine, you maybe have one more shot, Jacob, but I can't imagine They'll go for it, yeah, and no, it looks like Connor Litton out. is going to try and extend the BC lead to 10. I think that might be uh, Liam Connor there. Number, no, Litton, uh, Litton's number, 95. Number 95 is Litton. My apologies. All good. So it is Liam Connor, Jacob. That's my <laughs> bad. Kandani will hold, and Kendall will snap. The snap, the hold, the kick. All good for Liam Connor. We're going into halftime up 24 to 14. Technically one second, but you imagine that's all it'll be for Boston College and Holy Cross in this first half. We've played 30 minutes, Jacob. What have you liked so far from Boston College and Holy Cross? So I've really liked on both teams on offense uh, how they're running the ball uh, has been very successful. Um, we're looking at Kai Robichaux. We're looking at Matthew Sluka for Holy Cross, and we're also looking at Jordan Fuller for Holy Cross. I've really been impressed with how both these teams are running the ball, and uh, they're probably gonna continue that in the second half. These defenses are probably gonna get really tired. They're definitely really sweaty out there. I'm really sweaty out here, as you can probably see on uh, No AC video. in here, no problem. We're having a good time, because BC is winning. In complete control of this game, they've scored on every drive to make it 24 to 14 Boston College. Holy Cross has some work to do in the second half, Jacob. What do you think they'll try to come out and do in the second half? So uh, I think they're going to try to expose the weakness in the BC defense, which so far, in my opinion, has been the secondary. They're going to look in the middle of the field uh, because on the sidelines, they've been a lot less successful. Ken Dotty out to kick, it's a short squib. Boston College gonna try to get the ball back with one second, it might not even matter. Now triple zeros on the clock. As they'll begin the trot to halftime, Sam wondering what's going on there. And another odd halftime sequence to close it out in the first. Last week we saw the punting blunder from NIU that gave BC, or secured that they wouldn't extend their lead from seven nothing. And here we see the attempt at an onside kick it looks like. Pat McAfee style, albeit, as Boston College and Holy Cross will go to the end zones, trot into their locker rooms. We'll take 20 minutes here 
on this broadcast. Take a break with these two teams. Through 30 minutes, Boston College looks like they've done the work necessary over the week to be able to win some games. They're up 24 to 14, and we will go out to halftime. Yeah. Uh what a, what a great first half. Thanks for listening. We're here on the call, WZBC Sports. My name's Jacob Lassner, and this is Giovanni Collada here. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your last That's name. That's all right. All honest, good. You got it right. You're good. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get out of here for halftime, shall we? See you in 20 minutes, Seagulls. Should we block the camera?
20 minutes of halftime have passed. We've taken our break. Boston College has taken theirs, and Holy Cross is also well rested as we gear up for 30 more minutes of play here from Alumni Stadium. The score, Boston College 24, Holy Cross 14. We've seen scores on every drive today from the Boston College Eagles and scores on all but one of the drives for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And coming out of halftime, here back with Jacob Laster, Giovanni Collada, WZBC Sports Radio. Getting ready to play here in under two minutes. And Jacob, as Holy Cross is going to get the ball to start this second half, what do you think that they're going to come out showing? It's Dean Kennedy and Bob Chesney are running this offense. So what we saw last half was very successful run games uh, for both of these teams. And I'm sorry, I did not hear your question. What was it? The question was, I'm curious how Holy Cross is going to try and adjust to the Eagle defense and attack them in different ways. Oh, okay. My apologies. I think that they're going to look to the middle of the field where there was some holes in the Eagles' secondary uh, on a few plays. So they're going to look for that. And uh, I think Sluka is going to just keep running the ball because nobody seems to be able to bring him down when he has that open space. There's nothing stopping him from getting, like, 25 yards on the ground. It's been a rarity to be able to see Boston College able to stop Sluka in his tracks. Thomas Castellanos has finished up his warm-up throws, as is Matthew Sluka. And we are just about ready to play here from Alumni Stadium. 30 more minutes, and if this score holds, Boston College will level their record at 1-1 one and one as they prepare to host ACC powerhouse and potential top team in the country, the Florida State Seminoles. That broadcast will be right back here on WZB Sports. Jacob and I are on that game. Wells game, but you got 30 minutes to close out of this one before you get to that, Jacob. How much of a momentum shifter would a win here today be going into Florida State? Oh, man, I think it'd be absolutely huge. I think it would give the fans a better picture of what this team actually is. Because last week, uh, there were a lot of questions to be answered. Who's the quarterback? Who's going to catch the ball? Who's going to make big plays on defense? Will they be able to stay disciplined? Well, all that is coming to fruition here as we begin the second half. Those questions will be answered here 30 more minutes as Brian Shipman takes the kick out. A hard tackle that time from Owen McGowan will stop him in his tracks at the 20-yard line. And normally we see the exodus begin now. But the only exodus that's happening at this point is of Holy Cross fans. As we have a 10-point game, but Holy Cross fans sitting in this seat, well, our team is losing. I'm not going to stay for, for that long. Boston College student section still shoulder to shoulder in the south end zone as we have an injured eagle down around the 25. I think, Coach that's, a, I think that's a stretch. Shoulder to shoulder might be a little bit of a stretch at this eh, point. <laughs> we'd like to, like to emphasize it. Never, and regardless, it's better than it is. That is it, true. It normally is. That is true. And we'll see who the injured eagle is. A, a slew of eagle staff around him is he able to walk up under his own power. Quite see who the eagle that's hurt is. We'll tend to him, and we'll hope he gets better tomorrow. All right, second half action about to begin here in Chestnut Hill as the Crusaders take the ball from the 21 yard line. So first down and 10 from the 21 as you said, Jacob. Matthew Sluka and company are coming out, expecting to see maybe some more of the runs, but also as we saw in that final drive, maybe a tendency to begin to fling it and throw it out and, and stretch the field as we saw in that big pass to Justin Shorter that set up the touchdown to bring it to 24-14. Yeah, I think that uh, Jalen Coker is going to be a big factor in the second half if he can have as good of a game as he did last week. Jaylen last Coker. week he did have um, four receptions, 136 yards, and one one yard score. A factor in that game, but has not been as big of a factor in this one. Only till recently when he brought up his second reception. That started Holy Cross's movement into BC territory on that final drive of the first half. Looking good out there today. The sun is out in full force. What well, started as a cloudy day in Chestnut Hill has now turned into a beautifully humid afternoon here in Massachusetts. 
Jeff Halfley walks out of the huddle and the question marks around him all week. The, the narratives of him playing for his job, of, of every snap meaning something, and this is the biggest game of his four-year Boston College career. Jacob, how do you think he's answered those questions this week? So, everyone knows Halfley's on the hot seat right now, and I think that his players know that too. And I think that if his players truly respect him as a coach, then they're gonna come out and they're gonna do absolutely everything that they possibly can out there to try and make sure that their man is still yeah, their well, coach. Well, I think, I think they do respect him very much so. They have sung their praises on multiple occasions. Last week, Vinny De Palma in the post-game press conference after that game, in minutes after the game ended, was very vocal about, you know, Coach Halfley, you know, it, it comes down to all of us. It's not just him. You know, it comes down to me. It comes down to Cam Arnold. It comes down to Donovan Azaraku, who's one of the stars of this defense. This team is accountable, and they are policing themselves, as we heard Coach Halfley say back at, back at media day. The, the, with the depth of this roster, probably the deepest he's ever been accustomed to. We'll get to the first play from scrimmage in the second half. Sluka's alone in the backfield as Tyler Purdy comes down from the wide slot to join him. Sluka will fake a handoff now. He does indeed give it to Tyler Purdy. A nice fake there. Able to work it from the 21 to the 22. And Kano won that time. Brings up second and nine. A good stop there for the, uh, the Eagles' front line uh, as they are not able to get much on that run. Something that was a and little now, questionable as there's a guy uh, down on the and field now, And now Purdy looks to have suffered an injury directly after the run. Went to the ground a little hard there. Donovan Azaraku joined by George Rooks on the tackle. We'll have another stoppage of play as they'll attend to Purdy. Whatever he just did now. Okay, attend to Purdy and we'll be right back. Coming back now to the injury timeout. Tyler Purdy able to walk off under his own power. We've seen him be pretty integral and while Boston College has done some confused, maybe potentially confusing things with their running backs and cycling through Robichaux and Cam Barfield who, although Robichaux has received the bulk of the touches in the second half of play. We've seen three different running backs contribute for Holy Cross in Jordan Forrest, Jordan Fuller, and Tyler Purdy who just walked off. Yeah, uh, what, what, are the, what do you think the keys are for uh, this Holy Cross offense here to break through uh, that Eagles front line? Well, it's, it's going to take some more of plays like that if they're going to can really commit to running the ball. We've seen time and time again the Jets sweep, especially in last week's game, be a thorn in the side of Boston College, and they've defended it well there, but who knows with 10, or not 10, but maybe five or six more tries of sweeps in and out of the line, who knows what could happen and if this defense will be able to hold up. Yeah. Boston College won the time of possession in the first half in, in convincing fashion, having it more, five more minutes than the Crusaders did. And after the injury, we'll come back off. And, and I mentioned all those running backs. Amazingly, Matthew Sluka is still the leader with 69 yards and a touchdown for, for Holy Cross. So, nice. and really make it four running backs that really are able to contribute for this Holy Cross team. Back and ready to go now, they'll stack the box 5-3. Two DBs, Jones in the slot. Now they'll sweat out poop, pupil, excuse me, on around the 20. Sluka's alone in the pocket. They'll look for the screen, now a fake. Upstairs, he's got a man. Nice grab by Tyler Purdy. One play, not even one play after the injury and he's already back making plays for Holy Cross. He splits out wide and makes a huge catch for Holy Cross. First down and 10 now in on the 45 yard line. Who was guarding him there? Um, looks that looked to be John Pupil who, who split out from the free safety spot to get to the 20. 
Yeah, a bit of a miscue there from him as um, Purdy comes and uh, turns around and makes that catch. Here's Sluka, again from the pocket. He's joined this time by Jordan Fuller. And the leader of the committee will get another run, and this is a big one. Jordan Fuller is free down inside the 25, all the way down to the 10, after a stiff arm extends that run. Boston College caught sleeping that time as Neto Akpala able to huck it from the line to get to Fuller, but not before he drives it well into Boston College territory. Holy Cross working now from the 10, or excuse me, the 11 yard line, first and 10, not even a minute to go, have passed in this, sec in this second half. Around there, it was a bit of a miscommunication there on defense or just a lack of strength. They go from the 45 to the 11 again to 34. They'll run it quickly. Fuller gets the rock again. A reward for his big run is another one. And he, this time he's corralled too quickly. Cam Horsley able to sink him after a gain of three. And it's second and seven from the eight. Now they can get a first down to the one yard line. So in terms of time of possession, Holy Cross has not had it for very long on this drive, just coming on two minutes. And they're even getting quicker, so first down might extend this drive, keep the BC defense out there a little longer if you are indeed going to score. Yeah. Let's see what they can uh, come up with on this play here. Couple receivers split out wide. Shipman's in the slot. Moving across the line is shorter. The third new running back in is Forrest. As Sluka looks to throw, a pump fake now running to that side. Going to do it himself for a deuce, and he's got it! For another touchdown. Matthew Sluka with a pair of scores on the day and Holy Cross runs all the way down the field and scores a touchdown, buoyed by their quadruple, I mean, I don't even know what you call it at this point. Four amazing runners able to get it into the end zone for the Crusaders and suddenly this is a three point game with the extra point. Yeah, as I said at the beginning of the, uh, the half, the key to this half is gonna be the run game and they were able to gate that Big gain from Fuller, and then nobody can seem to knock down Sluka before he is able to force himself into the end zone for his second score of the day. Kick from Palenzuela is good, and officially makes it 24 to 21, and the Eagles, without even touching the ball in the second half, have seen their lead dwindle down to three. 12.40 to go in this third quarter as Holy Cross runs down the field on their opening drive able to punch it in for the score. Matthew Sluka does it himself. Eight yards and a touchdown that time. We'll be back in Boston College. We'll have the ball when we do. Crusaders ready to kick off, Palenzuela ready to boot it to the pair of O'Keefe and Williams, and Boston College has now their work cut out for them after halftime. What do you think was talked about in the locker room in terms of adjusting, even though you're winning by 10 coming out of halftime? So I think, um, first off, Halfley probably had a little bit of a conversation with um, the, the defense because the secondary wasn't very good in the first half, um, but again, they got exposed uh, and the first drive of the second half. So we're going to need to see some in-game adjustments from the defense. But also, as I've said many times, it is hot out there. So when the defense gets tired, I'm sure they don't really want to That is magnified. That is yeah. magnified for sure. And, and a bit of an odd sequence on the kickoff there. As we saw Jaden Williams go to the right sideline, excuse me, where the ball was go tracking to, stand around the 10-yard line, call a fair catch. So... No touchback. He avoids the no, penalty think, and a, and a penalty. They did get a touchback. For, oh, they, I mean, they did get a touchback. That's but so interesting. Is a fair, I, I think a fair catch in college is a touchback. Did, it's a touchback. So that yeah. must be what it was because Jalen Williams caught that ball. You saw Jacob yeah, right around the, the nine yard the, line yeah, past the five. before he went out of bounds. Wherever it's from, Castellanos will start the ball. Robichaud gets his first carry of the half, and the workhorse of the day continues to be just that. Another nice run there is a two-yard carry. Hard fought, albeit. Ball now on the 27. Second down and eight for Boston College after the run by Robichaud. That's his 10th carry of the day. 
Jacob, and now surprisingly, in in the place of Garwo, he has 58 yards and a touchdown. He's done very well in the place of Pat Garwo, who in 2021 had 1,045 yards. Here's Castellanos. This time will fake to Robichaux. Heavy pressure, got to get on his horse. Not able to escape the tackle as a flag flies in the backfield, maybe for roughing the passer. Shoestring tackle by Jacob Dobbs was not enough to, to slow down Castellanos as he was still able to get it out to Robichaux and the flag flies. We'll see what happens, although BC is moving back, Jacob. I wonder why that beer flag on that play, maybe holding at the line of scrimmage. That, yeah. Yeah, holding. A late flag for a holding. As yeah. It was deceiving as Castellanos went down as the flag came out and it went down right where he was, so who knows what that call could have been, but we do know now that it's holding and it will send BC back, they'll decline it. So, oh no, they're gonna accept it, excuse yeah, me. They third, will accept it, there's a stake there. It would have been third and eight with the incompletion, now becomes second down and 18 from the 17. And Jacob, how does that change your mindset for this drive, backed up inside your own territory? Oh man, I mean, if something were to happen here, it'd be an absolute just disaster. Let's just try to get a first down here, um, or, or a big play. Oh, we'll take anything at this point. They we go don't want one, this game to get out of hand. They go one by three to Castellanos' left. George Takas is in the slot. Now they stretch O'Keefe. Now Castellanos on a QB draw, trying to make something happen. He pumps the brakes. Another juke from Castellanos will do a good job to get it past the 20, just short of the 25, all the way down to the 23. Gain of five yards that time makes it third down and 12, and still work to be done, but a nice job by Castellanos to make something out of nothing there. Yeah. Um... I mean, we're gonna, we're, he's going to need to throw the ball here unless he can really get away and uh, escape pressure. Um, I've noticed the last three plays that BC has ran, they've really gotten to him. So let's that, see what he can do here. That to QB get out of spy pair of Jacob Dobbs, obviously the horse for Holy Cross, and Frankie Monty. That's Castellanos. Does have to throw it. He hits O'Keefe. Does Ryan have the speed? He does not as he's tackled down near the 30 at the 28-yard line. It's another gain of five, but it is not enough for a first down, and Boston College will, force, will be forced to trot out Sam Candotti for his first punt of the day. Yeah, Although, BC's in trouble here. That is not Sam Candotti. Would you believe it? I mean, at least it looks like him. Yeah, BC's in a lot of trouble here. They've got to uh, stop the bleeding before it gets... Uh, it gets too too late. Quick turnover for this defense as the mystery punter <laughs> able to punt it out. Fair catch. Called for around the 25 yard line, just a touch more to the 26. Boston College lets one get away there, opportunity missed as Holy Cross has it back. They've drawn it to a three point game here with 10.31 to go in this third quarter.
So I have some breaking news, Jacob, as we've found out who the mystery punter is. And who's that? That is a Lauren Di Loretto. Lauren Di Loretto. Punt, the graduate kicker and punter, but he's listed here solely as a punter. I can't imagine why they wouldn't go to Sam Candotti, who after seven punts last weekend. No, this BC depth chart is just full of surprises. Exactly. Especially and I think that says a lot about how many good players are on this roster, Jacob, that Lauren, Lauren, I didn't even know who he was. Yeah, and I'm very sorry to, to Lauren Di Loretto. He had a very good punt that time, put it to the 26-yard line for Holy Cross from his own 26. Maybe yeah. a nice punt there. Yeah. It's especially hard when you have to use a magnifying glass to find uh, any, yeah. any player on this uh, roster. <laughs> the coaches, coaches here. get magnifying glasses. Why don't we? <laughs> we get we get shamed on the camera if we were to use a magnifying glass every time to look for a player. But Lauren Di Loretto pins him inside the 20. Oh, it's inside the 35, 30. It looks like 25. I'm all kinds okay. of confused now. I think that's the 25. All right, at the 25, Jacob. Thank you for helping me there. Sluka and company will come back and. Sluka remains the leading rusher even after Jordan Fuller's 34-yard scamper to get them into the red zone that time. He has nine carries for 77 yards and a pair of touchdowns as he was able to punch in the last one. He'll stand tall at the 20, ball at the 25. Two receivers on the right side with some motion across the line. Tyler Purdy starts the drive once again. Akpala gets in as Sluka is able to throw with some time. Rolls out to his right, now gonna pull it down as he after he faced the throw. Sluka not able to do much more than a yard. Yeah. Down to the 26 this time as he exchanges some words with the referee on the sideline. You wonder uh, what that's about. Akpala gets through that uh, offensive line almost every single play, but he needs to just hit that quarterback. And the uh, speed of Neto Akpala to be able to chase down Sluka, even though he wasn't fast enough. I mean, Sluka's one of the faster players on this field, even offense true. and defense. That's true. Great point there. This time we'll go two to the outside, it's Coker and Shorter. Jordan Fuller after the big run last drive on once again. And he will not get the ball here as Sluka able to fake it past the 35, out of the 40 all the way to the 45 as he's tripped up out of bounds. Let's see if there's a flag and there is not. Keeps the flag in the pocket does Marcus Woods and after some yells from the Holy Cross sideline, these fans right in front of us keeping in the pocket, although Sluka was tripped up pretty late. Yeah, um, just another big run for this Holy Cross offense. It's been the story of the game so far. Let's see if they're gonna go into the air right now. Looks like they might. They got the receivers for it. It's Coker, Shorter, and Byron Shipman. Only two of those guys have a reception in this game. As Sluka is indeed back to throw. With all kinds of time, he looked for the long shot. Another missed tackle from Rooks. Means Sluka's able to get out to his right and extend the play. Whole flag of the backfield as Sluka takes it out and out of bounds. Inside the 35, I think, to the 40. Another flag comes from the sideline as he points directly to Thomas Castellanos, who is yapping after the play, Jacob. Oh, great. And now so, let's see how this sequence turns out. This might be an offsetting penalty here. Okay, that's that's that'd be good to hear. Uh, I noticed there's a player without his helmet on at right around Maybe. the 40-yard line. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. Got a trio of flags, one at the opposite 40, one at the 40 closest to us here on the right side, and a flag by the 40 on the opposite side of midfield, right where Jalen Coker is standing. And I'm assuming that's for some holding on Holy Cross. What we'll see about the flags for the post-play uh, festivities from Thomas Castellanos. Yeah. I literally pointed directly to BC's quarterback. Refs having a bit of a conference here. I wonder what they're talking about. Long deliberation, probably penalty yardages. Someone is talking to Bob Chesney. And another ref is indeed talking to Jeff Halfley. Now we'll go to Marcus Woods for the call. So it looks like we're going to have some offsetting penalties. And, uh, then, and then the penalty from Castellanos will indeed move Holy Cross. It was CJ Hansen on the holding and Elijah Jones for playing without a helmet. So those offset, but then Castellanos 
added a little more for Holy Cross there now at the, excuse me, 45. What was he doing playing without a helmet over there? I wasn't sure what was going Muscle on. Wall, and, and the thing is, even if it gets ripped off by another player, you'll, you'll see a penalty called against the player without his helmet. Probably for good reason. I wouldn't want to go out there without a helmet. That is true. Holy Cross offense ready to get back to work after the slew of penalties. On the 45, we got another one. It's going against Boston College defensive lineman Quan Williams. Oh, no, on offense. Oh, they got the offense for it. It definitely looked like Quan jumped, but looks like they're going to get C.J. Hansen, the right guard, multiple-time All-Patriot League and All-American. And so that was clutch. a break there for Boston College as the ball now moved back to the 45-yard line. First and, two, or first and 15 after the penalty. Three receivers all bunched up on the left side and another whistle blows. Man, do I love ref ball. <laughs> Sluka as confused as we are in the booth. Number tw uh, 24 is Amari Jackson. He said he's gotta leave the game. That is interesting. I've never seen that. Alex Washington, the transfer from Harvard, comes on in his place. Graduate student from Hoover, Alabama, is going to take the place of Amari Jackson, who is in coverage of Byron Shipman on the left side of the X. Shoulders in the slot as Sluka was back to throw, and another whistle oh. will, degrade, will cancel this play. It has to be a false start if they stopped it. Oh. Looks and like it is. That was about to, to be intercepted as well. To a rain of booze, he threw it directly to Elijah Jones. And, and no play there, so quickly, Holy Cross finds himself in a pretty big hole here now, first and 20 from the 50 yard line. Man, what a, what a sequence. A couple of refs, and Jacob, you said ref ball playing yeah. here today. Sluka Some will start. Deep some, from the gun. Some undisciplined teams here. <laughs> Purdy fakes to the jet sweep. Sluke is going to throw. He's going to get it under it, and it is going to be incomplete. One and Coker, no flags this time. Not to be. Sluka to Coker would have been a big, another big play. Again, negated by the BC secondary. Yeah, Eagles secondary is really a turn in the corner here in this second half. They're looking good to start this drive as uh, Coker really had nowhere to go uh, unless he made a spectacular catch on oh. that play. In the double coverage, Sluka trusted his number one receiver, but the coverage by Elijah Jones and John Pupil, too good that time. As Jalen Cheek trots on to cover, I think that's Justin Shorter, it is. Jalen Blackwell is going to be on Phoenix Dixon, the ghost touchdown scorer. As Purdy will get a fake here, and Sluka will keep it himself. Nice. Swallowed up right at the 50-yard line. And it is third down and a country mile now for Holy Cross. 20 yards to go to get to the 30 for a first down. Uh, I'm curious to see what Sluka does with the ball here, whether or not he uh, is going to hold on to it and try to muscle his way down for a first down or uh, trust one of his receivers, such as Coker, to make a big play. This will be a big stop for Boston College after their play, and now another flag. Call it the fifth in the last two minutes. Looks like it might be a timeout. And it is a timeout, we'll see. Oh, never mind. It is a penalty. Five yards makes it third and 25, 7.44 to go in this one. 24-21, Boston College still leads it, and this will be an extremely crucial stop for the Eagles, who after from their own, for the shadow of their own end zone, Jacob, squandering a potential opportunity of points for the first time all day, they can now get Holy Cross to trade punts with them. Yeah, uh, this, this BC uh, fan section's got to get loud here on third down as they have quite a mile to go for, for the first 25 down. 25 yards for a first down. Sluka trying to get it short. Coker going to work it himself. Not even close to enough. Just past the 45 to the 46 goes Jalen Coker. He's swallowed up by Donovan Ezeraku, who sprinted from the line, and Vinny De Palma, who gets another tackle with his co-captain of this defense. And now, well, parentheses, 
the co-captains of the defense in on that tackle. Fourth down and way long for Holy Cross means quite obviously a punt here for the Crusaders. Yep. So let's see the, what the Eagles can do with the ball this time. Back deep from Haney is Jaden Williams. He's gonna catch and return this one around around the 15. Shoestring tackle from Holy Cross is going to stop him dead in his tracks. Taking a yard back down to the 16. And it will be first down from Boston College for there. Thomas Castellanos gonna try to put the penalty in the rear view at an impact even when he wasn't on the field, but the impact he does have on the field, Jacob, is incredible, and we've seen it exemplified here in this score today. Yeah, a wonderful stop for the BC defense, but the key here is not to have the defense back on the field anytime soon. We're looking for a clock-eating drive here. Seven minutes flat to go in this third quarter. Cameron Barfield has his first start of a series all game, and he will get the ball right here with a big hole, Cameron Barfield. Able to take it up to the 25. Gain of 10 exactly means a first down for Barfield and the Eagles. A nice gain there on a run. Gaping hold helped by Drew Kendall and Christian Mahogany. There's a throw. Lewis Bond will take one from Castellanos and not much on that play. Let's see as Devin Haskins is able to get to Bond quickly. Well, there's 6.30 to go, ball's on the 25. It looks to be a no gain officially, second down and 10. And a nice job there from Castellanos to potentially get Holy Cross off guard as that play was even quicker than the speed with which they've been running all day. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, Castellanos out here for the next play already. Couple out wide on his right. Castellanos will look to throw. Has all kinds of time. Wants O'Keefe long. He's got his man instead. It's Jalen Williams. And oh, Jalen Williams had the ball hard free. But Cameron Barfield is right there to save it. Near disaster for Boston College. Just slips out of Jaden Williams' hands. Almost a costly mistake there by Jaden Williams. But uh, fortunately, Barfield's able to come out of nowhere and pick up that ball. I saw um, Williams wide open in the middle of the field. I even. Yeah, pointed you at can him probably there, see I... Jacob Blaster who's applying for his coaching job <laughs> right now. Maybe his quarterbacking job as he sees him from the best seat in the house. Jake Jarmolowicz stripped that one. Barfield there to recover and avoid disaster for BC. After the fumble recovery, Barfield has another one. Get rewarded with a nice carry there. Past the 50 he goes. Down to the, I'm waiting for the spot here, come on. Late spot means second and six, four yard carry for Cam Barfield. Couple of carries now and we see Robichaux really taking the seat here on this drive. Again, trying to keep Holy Cross on their toes with who's coming out. Yeah, and I like this uh, distribution of plays. We've got a Tommy run, we've got a pass, we've got a run. Let's see what they do here. And more running backs to study for Holy Cross means more work. You're gonna tire them out. There's a lot to remember. As Castellanos will pass, a pump to the flat is gonna be Mean he's going to have to take room. it out on his horse. Castellanos to the first down line, flashes a little peace sign at Terrence Spence, the corner for Holy Cross, and will get flagged for a taunt. Unbelievable. Just incredible lack of discipline there from Castellanos. You can hear the expression of the coaches, and it mirrors what the crowd is thinking. Come on, Tommy. Yeah, that's, that's a little embarrassing there. Uh, he's got to just take his yards, maybe celebrate a little bit, but not too much. Even though I'm not really a fan of the uh, excessive celebration penalties, if I'm being 100% honest. Sure. Let but the kids be kids. The they rule, are the, But the rules are the rules, the Jacob. Rules are the Tommy, rules. Tommy did not follow them there. You are right. It'll cost BC a couple yards that they desperately needed. Tommy trying to hit somebody there. Nice pass to the ball boy. Loss of the down two. Oh no, they just get third and six from their, uh, looks like to be 40 yard lines where they're huddling around, 42 exactly. So not a, not a terrible that, penalty. That doesn't look like six yards. It doesn't, the stick, it, that's, oh, oh 16. And that, it makes sense, right. it's what third and 16, so you lose the down and the potential first down from Boston College as those trips three out to the left. Barfield is right next to him. And he will get a fake here. Castellanos trying to make up for the penalty. He'll do it himself once more. Trying to find somebody he can't. Does run. 
Gets close to the sticks, but not close enough for a first. He out of bounds right at the 48. And Castellanos on fourth down and oh no, third down 16, excuse me, able to get it to six yards on fourth down. And they won't go for it, but a potential to go for it? No, I wouldn't go for it here with six yards to go. I don't trust the BC offense enough to uh, to get those six yards right now. We'd hope they trust themselves in this situation. They are going to defer to Lauren DiLoretto. Commonly known now as the mystery punter. I hope I coined that term. <laughs> Back deep for Holy Cross is going to be their wide receiver, Quinton Gregory, wearing double zeros. Oh, some whistles and looks to be just a timeout on Holy Cross. Oh, and they'll delay the game. So if it makes any of a difference, a five yard penalty on Boston College, we'll just go to the penalty number at the end of the game and DiLoretto will punt from five yards back. So it looks like both of these teams are a little um, undisciplined. Uh, first half, we kind of jinxed it a little bit. Um, BC, I think, only took like one or two penalties, but uh, here in the second half, it's been a little more uh, sloppy. DiLoretto out to punt. High kick. Finds Coker that time as they switch punt returners after the penalty. And a fair catch called for right at the 13. It's still 24-21 after each team has traded punts and then BC just gave it back to Holy Cross. Sluka and company have 87 to the end of the rainbow as we will get a 24-21 game right now, no break. They're ready to go in this defense in these first now three drives of this game has come out quite a bit, Jacob. Not getting any rest here from this offense. Oh yeah, uh, as I said before, the offense had to let the defense stay off of the field for a little bit, but uh, they don't really do their job. So hmm. let's see how the defense fares after not getting that long of a break. Sluka will keep it, trying to do his best. Thomas Castellanos and press it up to the 20, or 15, excuse me. Oh man, he goes down, but they'll keep it in the pocket as they'll call a flop there. No flag on BC. Let's see who even was in there talking that time. That was Chris Banks, the defensive tackle. Holy Cross fans letting the referees know what they think of that one. Yeah, let me just say, there's probably more Holy Cross fans here than BC fans at the moment. Outnumbering them all on the left side of the stadium. A couple NFL jerseys this season starts tomorrow as Jordan Fuller will get another carry here. Ball is free. Let's see who's got it. A bunch of Eagles around it. Amari Jackson celebrates, but is it preemptive? It looks as though it is that way. Yeah, I, I don't think that was in celebration. I think that was out of frustration there as it's third down. Might have been. He was turned away from us. Couldn't see, and it is third down. The ball did get knocked free from Jordan Fuller. Donovan Ezeraku gets the late hand in there to knock that one out. Yeah, and CJ comes back out onto the Ocala's field. Ocala's back, and CJ Hansen, the roll star right guard for Holy Cross, is down face first on the field. Yeah, it looks like uh, after the fumble he got hurt there. Uh, but he's going to get up on his own accord and uh, try to make his way off the field. And so third down does resume. It's a third and seven, 229 to go in this one. 17-yard line after the gain of four from Sluka. It'll Looks like actually he's going to stay on the field after that injury. Yeah, these guys are so tough. And now we hear the, the roars. Student section is shallowed out a bit. But whoever is here is cheering. One of the bigger plays at this point in the game. 2.30, 24-21 Boston College. Trips on the right side, short of the final receiver in the orange cleats. Coker split out in the X. Here's Sluka, he'll throw over the middle, passes incomplete, no flags as Cheek looks around before he celebrates. A huge stop by the BC defense there, and now we're gonna get the ball back with 2.17 to go in the third quarter. He was draped all over Coker that time and able to deny him another big play. Potentially he had all kinds of space if he was gonna run past Cheek, committed to the ball, played it beautifully, and gets rewarded with the incompletion, and now, from the shadow of his own end zone, Patrick Hawney is out to punt for the third time in this half. Jaden Williams comes out, that punt comes out low. 
Williams gonna take it out to the outside. He'll go past the 50 up to the 45, take a big hit before going out of bounds and lets the player know about it. <laughs> Coach is getting off him to try and avoid any more taunting penalties as Jaden Williams lowers the shoulder. Love to see it. And shows the intensity of this rivalry in one hit. Man, that was Jacob Dobbs too, their superstar middle linebacker. Yeah, Jacob Dobbs, just some, some, uh, some stuff about him. He's a linebacker, and he led Holy Cross with six tackles last game. He is a fifth-year student. Not sure what that means. Well, it means he's in his fifth-year graduate, but six solo tackles. He had 21 combined tackles for the captain of this team against Merrimack. No way. 21. He was, he was all Patriot wow. League third team last season despite playing four games, and in his first game back from injury, put up 21 tackles. He's been a force. Castellanos will try to avoid him. Pressure mounts. He rolls out to his right, able to avoid it. Got to get rid of it as Castellanos jumps and throws out of bounds. Nowhere. Nice job there by Holy Cross to get the pressure, but an even better job by Castellanos to avoid the sack. Nowhere for him to go there. He escapes out of the pocket. They almost got him down, almost tripped him up, but he uh, just hopped over the pressure and then hopped out of bounds and made that throw. What a fantastic play to avoid the pressure by Tommy Castellanos. Definitely a nice job there. Lewis Baum was in the area, threw it way over his head, hard to get that Jeter-esque throw towards the sideline. Gets a little darker over Chestnut Hill as Castellanos will run. Here's Robichaux out after the drive, sat down, and he will sit down a few Holy Cross defenders before getting a nice gain up to the 35. Maybe a touch beyond it at the 36, or 34, excuse me. It is going to be at the 35 regardless. 1.39 to go and counting in this third quarter. Third and two looms for BC. Solid run there by uh, Robichaux. Curious to see what they pull out next in their bag of tricks. Castellanos breaks the huddle, takes the snap, hands off to Robichaux, and Kai Robichaux has himself more than enough yardage for a first down as they will continue to chew this clock and play the game their own way. 1-14 and counting, clinging to a three-point lead. A nice job there by Kai Robichaud to take the hole and just not do anything special outside of getting the yardage. Get the yardage and then make some more happen with it. Yeah, uh, so far my MVP of the game has been Robichaud uh, for the Eagles. As good of a game as a lot of them are having. And also, I'll get to this in a minute, Two split out wide for Castellanos, will hit one of them, it's Bond. Past the 30, he goes, stiff arm gets him up. First down and more for Bond as he continues to stay up. Huge play for Lewis Bond is now a flag flies, but not before Lewis Bond works it down inside the 10 yard line to the eight. I think that flag is gonna go for playing without a helmet because uh, one of the Holy Cross players did not have a helmet on towards the end of that play. Devin Haskins, the number one corner, is holding his helmet as he trots off the field. He will, by college rules, have to sit out a play, but it does not look as though Lewis Bond is going to get tarnished here with that big play. Yeah, what a fantastic play by Bond to stay on his feet. Um, oh, never, okay. Face mask. face mask. On, it was on Devin Haskins who ended up losing his helmet, so good call on that one, Jacob. Uh, so what I was about to say is that our offensive line has at, looked absolutely fantastic today, only letting them get to our quarterback a few times. And when they do, Tommy's already seen it. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's flushing out to the right, going to the left, and he's using those legs and trying to extend the play. Castellanos and company have their best chance of the half. They split Johnson and Williams out wide as the snap is aborted. Castellanos seems to be under it. And it is indeed a recovery for Castellanos in Boston College. Near catastrophe that time for Castellanos. 23 seconds to go here in the half. Let's see if, uh, in, the, in the quarter, let's see if BC can get a playoff here before it ends. But I, I, doubt, I, doubt they, I doubt they will as, as they're taking their time. They're going to try. They're going to begin the switch sides. 10 seconds and counting. Boston College has three more downs to punch it in, assuming they go for it. Five yards out they are. And that'll do it for the third quarter here. Looking to extend this game in whether it's seven or three, it would be huge for the Eagles as they enter the fourth quarter up three, a scoreless half after a shootout of a first half, or a scoreless quarter, excuse me. And we will be back with the fourth quarter of action. 15 minutes to go to determine the winner in the Battle of Massachusetts right here on WZBC.
Back at now for the fourth quarter of play. 15 minutes to see who's gonna win this one. The Battle of Beantown, Massachusetts teams. Boston College and Holy Cross playing for the 85th time. And now with BC five yards away from punching another one in here. That would make it a two possession game once again. They lead by three now, 24 to 21. They got it from the five. Castellanos is 192 yards. He'll look to add to that total here as he gets Franklin and he gets another touchdown. One play of the fourth and one score for the Eagles as Castellanos finds Jeremiah Franklin on the flat and he finishes the job five yards and a score for Franklin and Boston College. And the extra point from Liam Connor will make it 31-21 in favor of BC. What did you like on that touchdown, Jacob? Uh, I just liked how he found his man open and he just had uh, all that space in front of him to, uh, to run right into the end zone. No trouble there on that touchdown feed. And a great job by Jeremiah Franklin to beat the rusher off the edge, get the angle to the end zone and scrape the pylon to get the touchdown. Five seconds into the fourth quarter. And now we're going to have another look at it. Yeah, it All like scoring plays are reviewed. This one announced, which means maybe they're taking a longer look at it than normal. Let's take a look up on the video board for a second. Franklin looks as though he got in, Jacob. What do you see so. there? I see him uh, definitely cross the plane of the end zone there, but could be wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> Did, he didn't actually get into the end zone is the key. He kind of scra It would have scraped the pylon if they are going to call it a touchdown, he landed on the green space out where the photo, or excuse me, the photographers are. There's some white checkered lines, and he landed in that green area, not in the end zone, but if he, if he scrapes the pile on Jacob, it's a touchdown by the rules of the game. So there's, I guess the review, Jacob, is for whether or not he did indeed touch that pile on before going out of bounds. Yeah, let's, let's hope that he did, because uh, that would make this a two-score game and uh, it would be key for the Eagles' success. And also, though, I don't mind the defense getting some extra rest. You know, get up to that... Uh... This review does prolong the amount of time that the defense is on the sideline, and even if they were going to overturn this call of a touchdown, Jeremiah Franklin will be down on the one-yard line. And they are going to call it a touchdown. So they are going to call it a touchdown. No need for that alternate reality. And Liam Connor and Sam Candotti along with Drew Kendall, will come out to kick it as planned. And they try to make this a 10-point game here with 14.55 in this fourth. Yeah, just some stats as we uh, wait for this field sure. goal. Tommy Castellano, 16 of 22 throws in the air for 192 yards. Robichaux has been the leader in rushing for the Eagles with 73 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Jalen Williams also... Uh, has made a few receptions. That's two for 70 yards. Sluka is uh, leading the game in rushing. He's got 99 yards with two touchdowns, and he's got 98 yards in the air going eight for 13. Some nice stats there. Certainly improvements from the last time where Castellanos had 138 yards, a total of a 205, a couple of touchdowns, and now he almost has 205 just through the air with his second touchdown coming to Jeremiah Franklin. Little sweet play. Gets six for the Eagles. And Robichaux, the leader in the clubhouse of the rush yards, you said at 73. He's had an amazing game, but what does this mean for people like Alex Broom or Pat Garwo or Xavier Coleman, who's now becoming a hybrid receiver running back? Those guys haven't seen the field today. Well, let's think about it like this. We've got a deep locker room. We've got a deep depth chart, and I think that the more reps that everybody gets, the better. And I think that if this is uh, if this is Robichaux's game, then let it be his game. Sure. It's whatever's working. That's how Jeff Halfley and this team have made it through camp. That's how they tried to make it through that last game last week. Unfortunately, could not come out with the win. But they're 10 points closer now to coming away with their first win of 2023. Liam Connor is good for the extra point, and it is now 31 to 21 in favor of the Boston College Eagles. And Jacob, it now, it, or excuse me, the game now rests in your hands. You have complete control of the game if you're Jeff Halfley and the staff. 
What is the approach for the West of the Way as we have a whole fourth quarter to play? So I think we got to, first off, we got to stop them three and out here, obviously. You know, if I was in charge, three and out. <laughs> um, if, and we all, if we all had it our way, three and out every time, sure. Yeah, be... so we've got to contain that quarterback, Sluka. He's going to try to run as he does every time. As I said before, he's got 99 yards on the ground, only 98 yards in the air. Um, just, just a Herculean effort from Matthew Sluka today to be able to get a first down and make plays in any way he possibly can, whether that's his legs, his arm, or his vision to be able to find someone else and get them involved. Yeah, that defense has got to keep doing what it's been doing in this half. We've stopped them uh, pretty well, except for that first drive. Oh. So uh, let's, let's look for our front lines to uh, break through the offensive line and uh, try to get some sacks. Defense and offense that are helping each other. As now it's, um, who is that? It uh, looks like Luca Lombardo, our fourth kicker of the day, coming out to do the kicks. He is a freshman, or excuse me, a sophomore transfer doing the kickoffs with an abs a former soccer player with a boot of a leg. Puts it in the end, back of the end zone, touchback for Holy Cross. That last drive spans 212, 43 yards, six plays, and an eventual score from five yards out by Jeremiah Franklin. Not including on the yardage there, the switch back nearly 90 yards from one five to the other. Sluka has 25 yards to try and extend this game for Holy Cross. Another touchdown for BC would likely put this game out of hand in the fourth quarter as Jordan Fuller gonna be the first step to changing that. Be able to take it up past the 30, or 30 excuse me, down to the 32. And on the stop there was uh, De Palma. That's his uh, fifth solo tackle of the game. He's got eight tackles in total. Second down and four on a gain of six. Especially spotted the 31. They go two by one to Sluka's right with Fuller remaining in the tailback. Quick change of pace, or pace, excuse me, for Foley Cross. As Sluka hands off to Fuller again. Fuller fighting for the sticks. He won't be able to get there. Third down looms as a gain of two. Brings it up to the 33-yard line, second and four. Third down. Third, third down, right? I said third down. You said second. Oh, my bad. I said <laughs> second down. I meant third down, ladies and gentlemen. As you can hear the music make serenade my mistake there. And this is an interesting point. Alex Broom... On the sideline, getting the, the Eagles ready. He is not in uniform, Jacob. He's not. So maybe an availability problem yeah, for maybe. Boston College today. Is Sluka going to try to do it himself? The, oh, design the run. Tackle is quick. Is it quick enough? It looks to be that way as George Rooks in on the stop there along with Jalen Blackwell. And it is indeed fourth down and one. They get one to the 34. And now another... Big stop for Boston College. Creates well, a fourth down situation for Holy Cross. Looks like the offense is going to stay out onto the field as uh, that was Rook's second stop of the game, his second tackle. Uh, it was a huge play, though, because, um, oh, no, it looks like they are going to punt. Well, we'll maybe, see. Maybe a fake punt. No, 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 no. This, is, this is a play. This is a play. Well, I out of the eye, out funny. of the eye for Sluka. He's got Fuller behind him. Moving around the line is Dixon. And Fuller is able to break free. Fourth down and one is a huge gain for Jordan Fuller. Nice job there from Holy Cross, but certainly a pain for BC there as they were so close to getting the ball back already in HC territory. Jordan Fuller had other ideas. First down and 10, down to the 47. Yeah, this is where fatigue is going to play a big role uh, in this defense. So uh, let's hope we can stand our ground here. Gain of 13 that time for Fuller. He'll be back there again. He'll be joined by Purdy as well in the backfield as there's no receiver split out wide for Holy Cross. And now Fuller has a play. Tripped up the line and won't get much afterwards as Cam Arnold joins Vinny De Palma in on that tackle. We just keep saying Vinny De Palma's yeah. game all game. He is just an absolute monster out there. His ninth uh, tackle of the game. Flying around the field once again. He had 12 in the first game. He's already got close to that number in this one. Three-fourths of the way there. Second and nine after the gain of one. We'll split two out wide this time after having nobody on the last play. Sluka looks for the long ball. Now takes it down. Going to get it some more yards up past the 50. 
We'll see where he goes, but regardless, it's third down. A good stop there by Arnold. Cam Arnold able to stop Matthew Sluka before he can get any further. Third and five now down to the Boston College 48. So they are in BC territory, but certainly out of field goal range here. Uh, you can get a field goal with 11 minutes in this game and have it be a two possession game. Down 10, 31 to 21. Yeah, I'd say this is four down territory for them, so look for them to uh, run the ball here and go for it on fourth. Coker's alone with Jones on the left side. I was Sluka wrong. will look for that matchup. Coker able to get the separation. He, did he get the foot in? He did. Wow. One foot for College, and that's all he got. Oh, that, is it actually one foot? It is one foot. A nice job there by Jalen Coker to make the adjustment on the back shoulder throw from Sluka. That and was Coker's fourth reception on the day. Turk He's got around 40 yards. And turn a third and five into a first and 10 from the 27. A drive extended for Holy Cross. Their fans loving every minute of it. And that, another thorn in the side of Boston College all day. Inability to get off the field on third down. Sluka evades multiple BC defenders. A flag is down in the backfield as he's able to get up close to the 20-yard line. Maybe a touch short at the 21. And this play is indeed coming back. It's Christo Kelly, the center, who holds, it looked like Neto Akpala on that play. George Rooks is in the area as well. But it negates the run by Sluka, brings it first and 20 down to the 37 now for Holy Cross. And so, as many times as Boston College has failed to get off the field on third and fourth downs in, in this half, at least, I think they were pretty good about it in the first, Holy Cross has shot themselves in the foot with these penalties. Yeah, we thought uh, BC was the undisciplined team, but it looks like Holy Cross is uh, taking the cake here. A lot of penalties helping BC. They'll go five DBs and a nickel. The free safety John Pupil comes down to play the slot. Sluka pressured by Salah, and finally they get back for a sack. It's Sheeta Salah, he's had a huge day as he high fives the referee. Marcus Woods <laughs> in on the celebration that time from Sheeta Salah and the vibrant graduate student in his first couple of games back after missing all of last year, able to make an impact once again here for Boston College in this defense. Yeah, that is his first sack of the season there and uh, the Eagles' first sack of the game. Comes against Matthew Sluka, 940 in that game. Second and 23 for HC, though, went a little filling special. Coker looked to throw it. He's still looking to throw it, but now BC will be able to get to him before he's able to do anything more than that. Jalen Cheek does, is not a fan of the trickery, Jacob. He shut that down real quick. And again, it's third down and long for Holy Cross. Officially, no gain on that play. From the yeah. 38, they'll have third and 21. If you can remember from last week when Jalen Cheek took that unfortunate penalty on fourth down, looks like he's having a much better game this week. Able to redeem himself. He redeemed himself in that game. He's redeemed himself all day here. Has seen a lot more reps in this second half, but a third and long for Boston College. Man, Hazaraku looks hungry right now. Let's see if he can eat. Sluka is there. De Palma misses a tackle with a flag down. Looks like a face mask, and they'll stop the play. Was it a false start? That's the only thing that'll stop the play. And another conference as Marcus Woods deliberates with his line judges what happened there. And a hands to the face against Neto Akpala will move it forward for Holy Cross. So now an untimely comment about the discipline, Jacob, is yeah, BC it. shows a lack wood. of maturity on that one. Should have knocked on wood. And so the worst part about that play, I think you all can agree with me, is that it is now first down. Is it? Oh my goodness. It is. That it is, is an automatic worse. first down. And yeah. instead of a third and 21 from the 38, Holy Cross now has a first and 10 from the 23. Biggest what if of the day, in my opinion. Yeah. Two split out to the left for Sluka. Jordan Forrest gets the handle here. And it'll be taken down quickly and with another flag going over the, over the play. And, and some lip from Elijah Jones. 
indicates that it's going against BC. What could this be for? Who knows? Taking some time to talk about all of these penalties as it gets down to the end of the game. Gets the and they will pick up the flag. The play will remain as it stands. Officially no gain down to the 20, yeah, the 23. A really unfortunate uh, series of events for the Eagles here. Leads to the second down and seven. 8-12 to go in this quarter. Second and, let's rule it a second and seven instead of no gain, up to the 20. And here comes Sluka with a handoff. Fuller easily able to get seven. And he maybe gets a little more than that down inside the 15 at the 14. Are they calling third down there? It looked like he got more than enough yardage. I, I didn't think so. You didn't think? Oh, okay. I think he might be two yards short. Yeah. The weird thing was when there's so many Eagles around them tackling, they'll, they'll block sometimes the spot. Officially a third and two. 15 yards home for Holy Cross. Fuller's already got 89 yards on the ground. Sweaty palms for Sluka as he hands off. Fuller trying to convert two yards. He's got that easily. Bounce to the outside. Has the end zone in his sights. Going for the pylon and he's in for a Holy Cross touchdown. Penalty shooting BC in the foot there leads to that unfortunate touchdown for Jordan Fuller. With seven and a half to go in this game, Holy Cross able to gain an extra life. Field goal will make it, or excuse me, the extra point will make it 31 to 28. And again, put this at a three point game. Boston College does have the lead, but they will also get the ball and be up three points instead of 10 now, Jacob. Yeah, now it's all in Tommy's hands. And again, we'll get another review here. So a couple of close calls in terms of touchdowns on the pylon here. Going as Marcus Woods and his team keen to take some more looks at this one. Yeah, going all the way back to the first quarter when uh, Phoenix Dixon thought he had a touchdown, yeah. but he didn't. And uh, let's see if this can uh, go the same way. Precisely Maybe right. Waste and some time off the clock. Just off the video board, it looks as though he's going to be in. Because if they called that last one, yep, he does get a foot yeah. in. His, the back of his left leg seems to hit the pylon there. I think he's in. I believe so too, that's how it looks. It'll be Jordan Fuller's second touchdown of the day. He had a two yarder on the first Holy Cross drive of the game back, it was an eight minute and a 51 second drive. He also had a 34 yard carry that set up a Matthew Sluka touchdown, so Back-to-back -back weeks here, Jacob, he has been a monster for Holy Cross and, is, and yeah. keeps them in this game right here, make it three points if this touchdown were to stand. Yeah, that'll put him over 100 yards rushing as well on the day uh, for Fuller. I mean, he's, he's just a monster out there. Uh, nobody can seem to knock him down when he's uh, running downhill. Maybe a future star. Certainly is right now for Holy Cross. And again, they will can keep the ruling on the field for Boston College. So it'll be 31-27 for the extra point. Palenzuela will be on to try and make it a three-point game in Boston College's favor. But certainly a had-to-have drive for Holy Cross if they wanted to stay in this game. And now with seven and a half, BC still in control here if they can just run the clock, Jacob. Yeah, um, I think another big factor in this game will be um how much momentum and how much that BC can uh, feed off the crowd here because you're saying momentum like, wise with Holy Cross, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they Holy do Cross, have it right now. Holy Cross has the momentum and they have the fans in the building to make it happen. Uh, so BC is kind of going against the tide here with uh, 726 to go in the uh, the fourth quarter here. And you don't want to think about you know potential what ifs. You don't want to go back and, and reflect on those if you can't help it, but you had third and 21 from your 38 yard line and a hands to the face penalty will be, oh, and as we're getting a severe weather advisory, might put this game to a stop. We're getting some yells from the sideline 
as the referee has stopped the clock. Severe weather coming towards Alumni Stadium 20 miles away. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of that, Jacob, as they will continue to play? I think they're trying to get those Holy Cross fans out. Yeah. <laughs> Either they have been making it up. Who knows? Is Palenzuela able to play? And he will make the extra point. Make it 31-28 in favor of Holy Cross. We should probably close the window, Jacob. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> that, that would be a good idea, but we'll be playing on until they tell us not to. It's 31-28. Boston College going to get it for another try here in this second half as they look to close this one out. It will be Jacob and Giovanni back with you when we get back. So as we try to figure out what's going on uh, with this weather advisory, they're telling everyone to seek shelter, but no Holy Cross fans have left the stadium. I wouldn't either if Complete I were Complete disregard for the PA announcement yeah. as Holy Cross is now in this game. How, with the energy on this sideline and in those stands, who could, who could take that away from them? Yeah. No, no Thunder would ruin the greatest day of their life as they are in it with Boston College and O'Keefe will call for a fair catch coming out for a touchback to the 20 yard line. 7.25 for Castellanos and Boston College to try and take off some of this clock, maybe get another touchdown. A field goal would help Jacob, but how are you going to get there? So we've got to make a few um, big plays here, but also this has got to be, as I said before, a long drive. We've got Robichaux, he's been the guy who is stealing the show for the Eagles today. He's got 73 yards on the ground. Tommy's got 60 yards on the ground. Longest carry of 18 yards. And I'll get the ball back here. Again, it goes to Kai. Kai up the middle, he's got some time, and down to the 29-yard line he goes. Gain of nine that time will set up a second down and one. Nice job there by Kai Robichaux be able to get up all the way to the 29. Didn't look like he had a big hole there, Jacob, but quickly it cleared because of, let's see who it was because of, Christian Mahogany on that right side. <laughs> Seems like he's lined up left of the center now as Castellanos to oh. play fake and an incredible tackle from the freshman Stu Smith is going to bury the shifty Castellanos in the backfield. Tried to break that one open quickly Got around him, but Smith with the shoestring. Buries Castellanos. Big loss for BC. It's now third and 12 for Boston College from the 23. Momentum fully in favor of Holy Cross right now, Jacob. Yeah, what an unbelievable play by freshman Stu Smith. A 6'1", 198 pound freshman out of Cathedral High School in Indianapolis. 12 yards to get a first down. 6'12", remaining on this clock. On the 23-yard line, they'll shut up a dime package, and a timeout comes from Boston College as the Purple Sea, their roar, outnumbers that of Boston College. This has got to be absolutely deflating to the Boston College sideline, seeing the uh, Holy Cross fans go so wild. Man, do but they travel. It's got to add some fuel to this fire so far. Traveled far and wide, and they're in this game as much as we think they are, and they know it. Boston College knows it. Let's see what they'll do about it in this timeout. And third and 12, Jacob, put yourself in Steve Shimko's box just to our left. What are you calling up here? Jaden Williams, run. Tommy's got to make a big throw. That's what I would do. Honestly, though, that might be a risky play. But it is third down, you know? So Jaden Williams is, is our deep threat. We got to try to find him here. 
If not him, then maybe a, a screen pass to O'Keefe might be able to get you there, but that's a risky play as well. Certainly, you gotta get 12 yards, and if you don't pick it up, you are giving Holy Cross this ball back more than enough time. They need three to tie, a touchdown would give them the lead, a situation you don't wanna have to think about. Yep. They can control this right here. Yep. The fate of this game is 100% in Tommy's hands right now. If he wants to win this game, we should get this fourth down, uh, this uh, third down com uh, conversion. So we'll start on this play now. Question arises: Would a fourth down conversion or a chance at a fourth down conversion be possible if they got it to no. a fourth and one or two? I don't think so either. No. But tell me why you don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's too risky. But with how good our offensive line is playing, if we can get that one yard fourth and one, maybe Who I would knows? go for it. But I don't see it happening especially with the way that uh, BC has consistently called its plays. I just don't see that in the playbook. It would be a, a punt for Sam Candotti. I think a long deliberation period here. Jeff Halfley, not in the middle of this huddle. It seems to be the offensive, one of the offensive coaches, Steve Shemko, is in the box to our left, but Thomas Castellanos is in the middle of this pocket and, or excuse me, huddle, and if you Think about this team looking for its leader that's not Christian Mahogany. That's one way to show it right there from Tommy Castellanos. Yeah, I've been very impressed with the way that he has showed his leadership um, and with the way that he's handled being the Eagles uh, starting quarterback uh, on social media and such. What a fantastic guy, and uh, he's absolutely perfect for this school. Let's just get a win, though. Yeah. A le one of his legacy games for BC be his first win as the starter for the Eagles. But that, that fate and that reality certainly has, a, has the hands of this 12-yard play. Sun shining on Castellanos' side. They'll trot three receivers out there, Griffin, Bond, and O'Keefe. George Takis splits out wide in the slot. Five defenders on, five DBs on for Holy Cross. Running back with Castellanos, Cam Barfield. Seemingly all comes down to this. They'll run, Castellanos himself, gotta make a move, he's gotta get there, did he get to the first down line? It's gonna be really, really close. Mere inches. Hergel loses his helmet. Castellanos is still on the field, he wants to go for it. He wants to go for it, it's gonna be fourth and one. Oh, let's. Oh, and they are. Oh, it looks like they're going to go for it. This, All right, is, this is exactly a roll of the dice. About. This is exactly what we talked Jeff about. Jeff Halfley's job in his left hand. The dice in the other. He goes <laughs> and rolls them as they're changing personnel. And now the punt team comes on. Oh, they're going to punt it away here. Much oh. to the dismay of Castellanos. Oh, my God. And Lauren DiLoretto is on, and they baited everybody in this stadium with That's a potential roll of the dice that would have either extended the, the time where BC is leading or given Holy Cross a chance to change that. Yeah, that might well, have put the wind in uh, Holy Cross offense's sails here. We'll see what, what kind of effect this uh, has on it. Oh, it looks like a timeout. Now spot. a timeout. Is he going to think about it? Is he going to think about it? That leaves BC with one timeout, still 5-10 to go in this game. So think about this, Jacob. If this game... Is, is elongated, maybe into overtime, maybe comes down to a final drive for Boston College. They only have one timeout to work with, assuming they don't use it before that drive is supposed to come. What do you want to see here on this play if they do decide to go for it? I think there's nothing else to do but run. Your run has been very good, Jacob, and I think that if you go to Robichaux, if you go to Castellanos, it has to be up the middle. You can't go to the outsides, although you do have the speed to do that, and they are going to run it. They are going to run it. All right, let's see what they do here. Robichaux and Castellanos, they have their meet with Franklin and Takis. The one receiver is Taji Johnson, split out in the X. Holy Cross, as expected, will stack the box. As Tommy starts from the pistol. Motion for Franklin. It'll go to Robichaux. Kaius has the first down without much of a doubt. The roll of the dice yields a flush for Jeff Halfley. 
as Boston College is able to extend the drive after some consideration. We get under five minutes. BC clings to this three-point lead, and now they cling to the fate of this drive. Jacob, what do you make of that call? Oh, absolutely fabulous play by Jeff Halfley with his job potentially on the line. Uh, I love the play call, and let's see what the offense can do with this uh, big boost after getting that, uh, that fourth and down. Now, and now BC content to take their sweet old time here. O'Keefe splits out in the Z. Castellanos will go right back to Robichaux. He's got room at the outside this time, and Kai gets it all the way down just on the nose of the 50. Maybe down to the 48-yard line. Second down and two awaits Boston College. Now we're up to four. Now we're down to four minutes of this, and I think Jeff Halfley, along with every Boston College fan that still remains in this park today, counting down those minutes to where if Boston College is able to hold on, they will come out of here one and one. Yeah, um, a game like this has me thinking about um, none other than, than Earl Grant, the head coach of the BC men's basketball team, saying, gritty, not pretty. Yeah. And that's not really we want, where we want to be at a football program, but I think it is where we are right it's now. Gonna, it's going to have to work for Boston College on this drive. Castellanos going to go right back to Robichaux. Expect much more of that as he gets a first down here. And goes all the way down across the 50. A gain of three. Has a first down to the 49. And Boston College moves the chains again. And, and to think about the alter, alternative of punting there. Holy Cross gets it. They have it right now. Four, three minutes to go. They score a touchdown. You, are, you put yourself in a situation to have to score to extend this, a chance at a win here, Jacob. Yeah, so uh, once again, I, I just want to say that was just a genius play call by, uh, by BC. I mean, it's not that much of a genius play call when you think about it, but... Um, maybe, yeah. a, maybe a career-saving decision Indeed. as Castellanos will throw for the first time on this drive. Lewis Bond going to use his speed to the outside and get down close to the Holy Cross 40, sliding down at the 39. You know what? Uh, 42, I, excuse me. You know what? I've seen that play a few times from BC where they have two receivers out to the left of Tommy and he just throws that screen pass to one of them. Our receivers are good enough, they've got enough speed, and they can stay on their feet as long as they hold on to the ball. Uh, I love that screen pass, pass play. When, uh, almost like a run, almost like an yeah. outside sweep, a run, and Lewis Bond shows off the wheels that time as he's joined by Tazi Johnson in the X. Jeremiah Franklin takes the spot of Takis. Cameron Barfield is in behind Castellanos as the tailback. Oh, and way early. Holy Cross that time, maybe going against BC, but who knows? Somebody on the oh. offensive line might have jumped. Javon there. George, the 300 pound freshman defensive tackle, went right through the line before the snap was called. But BC was walking back because it looks like a false start. <laughs> Hear that with the everybody but the center call. Everybody but Drew Kendall in fault on that play. I, wonder, I always wondered how they scored that, Jacob. <laughs> You think what, they just go Mahogany, Hergel, Taylor, Trapillo? Yeah, they just like add like the penalty yeah. next to all their names. Maybe. Everybody but the center. Or you think they just go everybody but the center? I would not want to be a stat person for a football game, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That'll make it easy for them. They do great work. Help us out big time. Indeed. As Robichaux is in the backfield, he's helped Castellanos out big time today. It'll be a draw for Tommy and slide down after seeing nothing. So quickly after the penalty, you have a much different situation after that sequence, Jacob. It's going to be second down and eight. Yeah, 2.07 to go in the game, though. Uh, Holy Cross is going to call a timeout before the uh, um, two-minute warning. And it's going to be, there's no two-minute warning in college, Jacob, but oh, it is not? third down. And with two minutes left to go in this game, Boston College needs eight yards here, now 10, to be able to get, and keep this drive moving and keep this game in their hands. Because what would be even worse than the punt is giving it back to them, or Holy Cross, excuse me, with less time than before with an ability to end the game. Yeah. And you have nothing to say about it if you're Boston College. Yeah, the end is in sight, especially if BC can manage to get this uh, first down here with uh, 10 yards to go. They'll need 10, as Jacob said, from the 49. 207 remains. It's 31 Boston College, 28 Holy Cross. We're going to take a uh, quick minute long break here. Uh, when we get back, the most important part of the game.
They trot out. Third down and 10 awaits them. 49 on the 49 yard line, 207. And if Boston College can get a first down, Holy Cross has two timeouts, but after that, you'd have to imagine you, you make the walk to the buses if you're Holy Cross. Yeah. Um, first down is crucial here if BC wants to uh, win this game. Because if you give the ball to Holy Cross right now with two timeouts and all these fans roaring in Alumni Stadium, I don't... I don't know how. I mean, I, this de you'd have to have incredible trust in this defense, which yeah. I know Coach Halfley does as a defensive-minded coach. He spent some time with San Francisco in their DB's room in the NFL. And and if this, it would be a challenge for this defense. The offense has done a good job to give them some rest, though, if that were to be the case. The fourth down extends their rest time on the sideline. But if you're Boston College and it, it's fifth the defense, I don't know if I'd want to come back out there yeah. and just trot out of here with a win. Yeah. I agree. Let's hold on to that football. We'll see if Tommy and company can make it happen. Everyone's on their feet. Including us. Including us. Two by two for Castellanos. Robichaux stands with him in the backfield. They'll wait as the clock now starts at 2.07. Officially a third and 11 from the 50. Stack box for Holy Cross. They'll fake to O'Keefe. Castellanos will do it himself. Is it going to be enough? It's not. And now they'll let it go down, but not if Holy Cross has something to say about it first. And they do with their timeout. A good attempt there by uh, Tommy Castellanos to uh, get that first down, but it's not enough as he's only going to get about six yards on that carry. Officially a gain of seven. Brings it to the 43, and, and now... Not decision, I mean, if it's decision time for BC, there would be a lot of head scratches in this stadium. What would you do? I would punt it, yeah. Jacob, because I think if you're put, especially if, if DiLoretto can pit, pin them inside the 10 yard line, Boston College is going to be able to crash the box, because they're, I mean, they're not gonna be able to run it, but they might have to run it if they're close enough to the end zone, avoid a safety potentially, and, and if you can't pin them inside the 10, well, you have the time to be able to get that kick nice and high and take a lot of time off this. A fourth down, rolling the dice with fourth down here would be very risky as Sam Candotti is on the punt. So switching punters, oh, we're we back. are. We're back to Sam Candotti. I didn't, know they, I didn't know they had that much depth where they could switch punters with the ease and confidence that they do, but it says something about Boston College's ability to build a team. Jeff Affley's done a very good job using the keys to his disposal in this game is Candotti going to try and pin him deep. Fair catch called for at the eight yard, nine yard line. And some flags fly as we got more and that Are you is a mistake for Boston College. Nothing more you can say. Donovan Azaraku was there. Taji Johnson was there. And Taji Johnson is pointing to his head as ooh, flashes of lightning behind the Chestnut Hill Reservoir. Might put an end to this game before Holy Cross can. Ooh, did you see that? I did. Wow. I actually, no, I missed it. I missed the lightning. I saw the uh, unfortunate penalties that just ensued, though. Both are scary. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's, that's going to go on BC, and that's going to cost them how many yards? 15? 15? 15 yards, unnecessary roughness. And if you look at this game, why BC will have lost if they do, that, my friends, is why. It was that penalty, and it was the penalty on third and 21. As this time, a second strike will scare some more people. And they're going to call everyone out. We'll see if they keep playing. Looks like they're going to pause play here with uh, 1.58 to go in the game. BC only up by three points. 31-28 in favor of Boston College. I'll have a first and 10 from the 43 when and if we do can resume play. That means we have to go as well, but look at this. Holy Cross hyping up the fans. They're not moving as Boston College walks off the field. Their heads hung after that penalty, but they do have the lead, at least for the moment. We'll see you guys when we come back to play. If this is goodbye, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us, and if BC wins or loses, we had a fun time. Thank you all very much for watching today.
We'll probably be back, though.